I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm so But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. It's in the air, like a blazing flare. Shadows in the atmosphere, charting the stratosphere. I prayed for you and kept you near, and hopes you chase away my fears. I'm on my own, you made it so. No point in blaming you, you did not know
Hello everyone and welcome back to Collegiate R6. It's been a minute, but it is good to be back and of course, could not imagine a nice Collegiate welcome, unlike casting with the greatest, <laughs> sexiest man in all of T3 and all of Siege. It was of course, Chief Cass, you know him well, I know him well, and I'm interested to see how we can uh, guide you all through this, uh, what should be a pretty fantastic matchup. We've got the Premier Invite League semifinals on our hands, Akron versus Kettering. Chief, how you feeling? Joda, my friend, it's great to hear your voice on a broadcast and your intro is just butter and jelly. They just, it just goes so well together. But looking at our team today, Kettering and Akron, whoo, that's quite a matchup, particularly when one of these rosters, an 11-time collegiate champion. If you watch any Thing in the collegiate sphere, you know that Akron is the powerhouse, but Kettering, they've had some strong moments. They are capable of greatness, but will they be able to achieve that today? That's going to be the big question in our best of three series. Well, you hinted at it. It's the underdog story, the Cinderella story, whatever you want to call it, Kettering, they've got their work cut out for them by a long shot. It's Akron. Everyone knows how good they are, how it is impossible to beat them, a feat that has been accomplished several times this season, much to many people's surprise, which is exactly where Kettering are going to be looking to capitalize. A team that shows, like you mentioned, moments of greatness. That is exactly what they need tonight. They need to be great. They need to be perfect. If they can put two, three, and they'll emerge victorious, but it is going to take a lot. We've talked a lot about this behind the scenes, about how many rounds we're going to play tonight. How much can Kettering get out of this matchup? But 
given these last few weeks of play, I think we can really, I don't know, throw all expectations out the window. Kettering are coming in here with a good last couple of weeks. They've surprised a lot of people. A victory over Grand Canyon University, GCU. That is a big deal. Riding high off that one, I'm eager to see how they stack up tonight. Well, the band wave is going to get a little bit more unique. We're talking about changing things up. That first map pick of Coastline, the Zips have known to just be a powerhouse on this map. Coastline is their best map. Now, there is some silver lining. We're talking about doing homework. Well, maybe Kettering is prepared to have Coastline come through because, well, when you're 11-time Collegiate Champion, that means there's a plethora of VODs on the market. A clever IGL support staff could be able to break that down, digest that information, because we think about Coastline as being that map that's all about gun go burr, but some of the best games on Coastline is when it actually gets in that like slowed down mentality, when we're seeing it play out like Chalet, where the attackers are forced to take every single map, every single buffer room one by one in a staged manner, in a controlled manner. And, you know, that could be the ace that Kettering has up their sleeve. We're going to have to see how that ends up panning out, though. Well, the map bands that we're looking at here are pretty interesting. And I think everyone watching right now is going, Kettering, what are you doing not <laughs> banning Coastline first? Akron and Coastline, those, you know, go together so perfectly that, you know, it is, it is shocking that anyone would let that map through the pool. This is not a best of five where you, you know, have so many different maps and maybe you're even picking first. No, this is ban right off the bat. You have a chance to remove one of your opponent's strongest maps or your weakest maps and hope that that's enough to get you through this fight. And Kettering have elected to ban out Clubhouse. We're going to see how that comes into effect. I mean, rather soon. It is our first map, but I'm a little concerned. I mean, I don't like what I'm feeling already. Going to theme, though. That's where it could get super interesting. Not a lot of collegiate teams know theme well, and I know Akron, they aren't that great on theme they don't play theme very often so maybe this is exactly what kettering need to do i talked to bucka a little bit but of course the captain of kettering a little bit of before this matchup what exactly can we expect i asked him and he said you know what we've been focusing on the mental prep for this one and i said okay <laughs> that's a start but he also said we've been prepping one other thing you'll see it it's a surprise i expect it's theme park if they've been putting in the work on theme park that's big. That's big. They can really make an impact there because grinding out one of these unexpected and rarely seen collegiate maps is perfect against a team that you need to catch off guard. This element of surprise, this element of unexpectedness, that is what Kettering has to hold on to because coming out of coach, they're going to go into theme park and that's where they have to make a statement. Now, we have to see what they're actually doing on Theme Park, what new strategies that they're bringing out, because we've seen Akron bleed when they're forced to take an entire map control. Fortunately for you, Theme Park has that element. If you're downstairs in Throne Room, well, it's going to force the attackers to either clear in from Cafe and through Cash and converging on that top floor, starting that vertical play. And the same story can be said for the two bomb sites upstairs, whether or not you're going over to Initiation or Dorm. It's going to force the attackers to do that exact same scenario applying as much cutoff as possible as well as that pressure and akron they like to be a team that's all about those swift executes trying to fly into the map as fast as possible if you're able to build up a brick wall maybe you can trip them up a bit well i just consulted my notes here to just to see about the uh, last two time, the, the time these two teams actually faced it was week two i believe of the premier invite league regular season on Clubhouse and Villa. The Clubhouse was a 7-1 victory for Akron. So likely, whatever Kettering were feeling after that matchup, they said, you know what? We have no interest in feeling that way again. Let's get Clubhouse out of here, and let's see what we can do on Coastline. We're going to head right on into it, though. We don't have to wait any longer to see exactly what kind of Coastline we can expect. Our operator bands, of course, up first to see exactly what Kettering want to take off the table. They'll start things off with a lion ban, and I've got to applaud them for that pick. That's, of course, IMATS, one of IMATS' favorite operators that he pulls out on this map, so it's good to shut down the star fragger of Akron, or at least slow him down a little bit by cutting down one of his favorite operators on a frag-heavy and lion-heavy map. 
But there are other operators in the game that will be able to provide you that information, whether or not it's an Ionic clone or even the Dokubi calls. And again, the name of the game for Akron is taking the map with information in a swift manner. Another operator that could no longer a factor here on Coastline. That means all hard breachers are open, as well as Mr. Thatcher. That, that keeps things interesting, you know? But on Coastline of all maps, it's not too big of a deal, you know? It's a map that does not require hard breach. One of the very few, Chalet being the really only other map out there that you're going to see an execute go down without any sort of hard breach done first. But Chalet, though, still still does have a good bit of hard breach. It really just depends on the objective. Um, you know, some sites are bound to hard breach on maps, but Coastline, of course, none of these require it fully. And we're going to see the Malusi and the Maestro bands come out next. That, of course, information focus and plant denial focus of the Maestro and the obnoxious Banshees, or as they're more affectionately known, the Wub Wubs, they will also not be a factor in this first map. So nothing too crazy coming through the ban phases, all stuff we have come to expect on a map like this. And well, in terms of these lineups that we're seeing in front of us right now, every only exception I would say is the Echo, the operator that has been seeing a, honestly a recent increase in the meta ever since falling from grace when those Echo drones were changed a bit. And that does mean we might be seeing some interesting plays coming out from Tommy Boy. I was hoping to see a buck make it through for Akron because one of the best ways at softening up this bomb site is going to be coming from underneath. Whether or not you're going to be pushing in through the pink bar, the north side of the map, or in through offices. But the whole idea is to eventually enter in through blue bar where you can start that vertical play. Now you can still do that with the operator lineup you have. You're going to have to use more precious reaching rounds either coming out of the Zofia or from the Ash. You can also couple in a frag grenade with the whole idea of removing that smoke spot, which is the south part of Puka, over where Echo is currently standing. So that's one of the best places on that bomb site. You're able to clip those smoke grenades through that wall and shut down all of the plants. Or here we'll see as Akron begin their approach. You've got Hennessy. He'll work his way in from this office side. Indications of what could be a vertical attempt coming out from IMAT. He'll look to come from below, maybe get some good damage dealt there. But for now, Hennessy is just working his way in, clearing all of his angles as is Jetcon, who's approaching from the opposite side of this first floor, pushing on in through Sunrise. IMAT opening up the series, an opening blow onto Bucca, who will overexpose himself to the Billiards double window. An early mistake coming out from Kettering, not the way they want to start. Still a unique tack coming out from Akron. They're going to elect to not even take on that first floor. They're going to do a linear take upstairs, trying to remove as much of that pressure. Now, there is a lot of that coming from Kettering over to the east side of the map, and those are going to be fixed positions over by 90, so they can hold the cutoff from Vey. So if Akron goes for an execute on either one of the bomb sites, they're Crossfire simply because Kettering is going to be able to insert themselves and come in a position on the flank that they might not be prepared for. But still, strong angles on the actual bomb side for Kettering. It's actually going to be a different strategy. We're talking about that smoke spot on the south side of the map. Well, instead, he's going to be playing over on Cool Vibes, another good insertion point that Akron's going to have to deal with if they want to find themselves coming up the Cool Vibes stairs. What we just saw there was Papa P going for a little bit of a roam, trying to get a little bit aggressive and at least indicate to Akron that he is someone who needs to be dealt with. But Akron are ignoring that completely. They're already finding themselves inside of Billiards, going for this plant. The coverage is here and the smoke grenade is too late. The bomb's going to go down. Yes, Arv takes a bit of damage, but it simply doesn't matter. It is a 5v4 post plant and Kettering need to spring into action. Papa P opens things up, cuts down R, but Jetcon is there with the trade. There's a player on this billiards window and that is going to be massive. Kettering have to deal with this. They've got to put somebody downstairs. You've got to have somebody right now. I'm at on the window repel. He'll be allowed to get another kill. Hennessy gets one for his own. It's going to be all up to Anomaly. The 1v4, no time remaining, and it's I'm at the one of many players in the area who could have found that fatal blow. Akron, a decisive attack, not wasting any opportunity to get that bomb down. They'll take round number one. 
Well, we're talking about Kettering doing their homework, and actually that round was a reaction to previous Vons of Akron. We've seen particularly IMAT when he had access to that line fly up those cool vibe stairs. So Kettering said, we're not going to allow that to happen at all this round. We're going to post up our smoke in this position. And unfortunately, Akron said, I respect the decision that you made, and I'm going to bypass that part of the map altogether. They saw the opening, they went straight for the plant, and you can see Kettering knee-jerk reacting, identifying that the hole Defenders that they made, the trying to crash back onto action. their bomb site using those smoke grenades from distance, but sadly, it came out a little bit too our strategy that, but maybe you rotate your echo over to Cool Vibe Stairs, you can still stun lock players coming in through jungle, you're achieving the exact same goal that you would with a smoke grenade, and smoke can still participate at denying that B drop, or pardon me, that B plant. I gotta admit, Chief, <laughs> round number one, already just one round in, and Kettering have not given me the greatest confidence after that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is one round. We can't learn a lot from that. But what we just saw was Kettering sit completely still while a bomb went down in their objective. You, you can't allow that to happen. You, you, you simply cannot allow that to go down anymore in this, in this map or in this series because... On a map where you really need to just rely on your objective play because you know Akron are ready to outfrag you at every turn, they failed on the objective play in the first round. That's not where yeah. they want to be. And we've right now they are going to change up the objective. They are going to go to kitchen, and that is a good adjustment already. But they need to make the adjustment within the round as well. We are going to see some early pressure being applied to Akron as they work their way in the building. That's a positive change here. We're going to see Jetcon and Derp getting a little bit of a 1v1 here. But IMAT has on in his mind to change that up right away. He'll come from behind. He'll silence Derp. And there goes one player. Tommy Boy, in the meantime, he's already been cut down to about 5 HP. He's one shot at this point. So Kettering are already off to a rocky start. Kettering has decided that they're going to try to waste as much time as possible with off-site roams. The problem was Derp was by himself on that roam, and Papa P is in the exact same scenario, getting wall-banged through a green barricade. Kettering needs to have a strategy. If they want to waste time, it has to be with teamwork, because Akron, their ability to clear out the map with drones and apply flank pressure is just too oppressive. Again, at the face value, face value, too, but it's starting to slip away with their inability to actually communicate and coordinate as a team. Reload. Well, they're going to have to be forced to coordinate with what remains of this defensive pressure. It's just three of them. We've got Anomaly, the smoke, in the A objective, while Bucca currently just runs all over this top floor. One thing he does have going for him is he's got this angle, but what he can't do is stop the plant from going down. IMAT's going to be allowed to walk through the hallway, kill your smoke player, leaving this into now a one versus five. IMAT, there it goes. The final three kills credited to the man himself, and Akron just found themselves what looked like an effortless round number two. That is not something that... Kettering can allow to happen again. That's what I said coming into the round. And unfortunately, we did not see that change. Of course, the big one I'd say, the big mistake that cost them there was uh, Bucca just playing too far away from the objective, not able to catch IMAT as he ran across. Of course, vaulting animation, but not only did that allow the plant to go down, but it cost the life of both of his teammates. And that is not what he was hoping to do there. So a couple of little mistakes coming out there. But uh, as we know, Akron will punish every single one of those mistakes. Round two is no exception. Defenders so there are multiple ways of attacking onto Kitchen. Everybody thinks vertical pressure is the only way to do so. But Akron has just proved that there are secondary objectives in pushing into Kitchen. Clearing out an entire first floor puts the attackers in a strong position because those defenders are now going to A, have to rotate down the two stairwells or they jump in through square. Both those options will create a lot of noise and the defensive strategy for Kettering where they put all of their utility upstairs to, draw, to try to deny that vertical play, well, they never adjust after the fact. As soon as Akron started to take that control of the west side of the map, we needed to see Kettering start to maneuver their forces 
cutoffs, particularly over in security, or at least just try to double swing off fallen teammates and refill those gaps. Kettering never really showed that level of dialogue, and well, Akron is going to be able to exploit that time and time again. It's time to see those adjustments from Kettering. It's round number three. They've got acclimated to now two different objectives. So uh, it looks like they're going to try their third. We're going to head over to Blue Bar and Sunrise Bar now in an effort to keep things loose and keep things oh. fluid. But, um, well, immediately the trajectory of this round looks a lot like the two prior. Hennessy walking on in. He'll claim the first kill. That's Papa P who is contesting that early office pressure with no utility or really no uh no teammates there to support him a dangerous and aggressive position looks like kettering are eager to get aggressive and eager to get these early gunfights going but at least right now they are all going in the favor of akron you can see a little bit of vertical and i'm at well he's got an intent to stop that he'll swing on in he's got a drone at his feet but he's not going to prevail for the first time here comes bucka he goes for the swing and he's got the smg 11 to get him the equalizing blow and now a 4v4 between these two teams yeah but with matt falling in that position akron zips has just identified that that top floor is going to be a battleground that they have to secure now the vertical play of bucka is going to be far too oppressive for them to achieve their optimal goal of going for that bomb down play. And Kettering, they have enough utility up there to last the entire onslaught of Akron. They have shields, they have gates, and they also have derp and his 2K skills. The tertiary bomb site for Akron, it's not looking good for them. The diffuser surrendered over to the northeast side of the map. That's gonna force Hennessy to start to go for broke. He's the only one left of his team. He doesn't hear the one on the other side of jungle, and there it goes. It's gonna be a 3K in the round for and Kettering, they stop the bleeding in round three. Happen on their third attempt, keeping keeping it loose, changing it up every time, going to Blue Bar and Sunrise and making it happen. Excellent adjustment. It started with that vertical control, that opening pick from Bucca, at least opening pick for Kettering. They had already lost one of their own, but they didn't let that get them flustered at all. Excellent heads up play from Baka. He didn't feel the need to rotate back to the objective. He stuck firm in that top down position. He dealt with IMAT, the player looking to clear him out. And then, well, Derp dealt with everybody else. And as far as that round goes, you may be thinking, well, it was just a fluke couple of engagements. Honestly, no, I think that Kettering put themselves in a perfect position. And rather than Akron capitalizing on a couple Defenders of Kettering mistakes, it was Kettering doing the same right back at them. It wasn't normal to see IMAT go for a solo top-down clear. Of course, the two previous rounds gave him all the confidence in the world. Understand. Confidence got him killed. That was a 1v1 engagement. As an attacker, you have a responsibility to put more manpower into that roam clear. You cannot expect to get into a 1v1 with any defender, even if you're the best collegiate player ever to have existed. I don't believe that's all that arguable, actually. I'm at kind of is the best, but I mean, you gotta you gotta have your teammates with you. You gotta have information, which he did. But Bucka was still able to catch him off guard by swinging when he was unaware and by cutting him down. And that one mistake silenced your top fragger in the lobby, dismantled your initial push on that south side, and forced Akron to make a tough decision. Do they want to reposition, go upstairs, clear him out, only to then rotate back down to the objective, or ignore Bucka completely and go for the full send? And as we can see, the full send did not pay off. And this is another lesson that you can pull from maps that you play. That exact defense mirrors something that you would see in planes and games on Villa. It's always my go-to maps for drawing parallels because it's always a great smoke spot upstairs what do you do well you have i matt he backs up deeper into aqua he holds the angle looking into the punch holes over by that triple wall and he calls the rotation over into a vip now you're holding a cutoff in that smoke spawn and when we saw that mute go for that swing if he plays that aggressive the player over in VIP is going to end up taking that 180 degree crossfire and win that engagement, or at least get that trade. And that way you can now start to apply pressure to the other side of the map over by Puka. 
now you have full control of that top floor. Again, it's all about knowing your angles. Akron's a team that likes to have swift executes, but sometimes you just need to back it up a bit and slow things down, like they're doing this round. This is a methodical clear of the map for Akron. They've realized their mistakes, at least what they did in round three, and they're just, you know, backing up that aggression slightly. Well, this round is, is very different. I mean, just that one round victory from Kettering, that was enough to really slow down. We were here, the bomb was already going down, and although we're not there yet, I think we are moments away. Hennessy and Jetcon both positioned in Aqua. You've got IMAT in the perfect post-plant position, but this time, the Toxic Babes have arrived on time. Anomaly gonna put that one down. We can see how it's clipping through the wall all around it, denying the default plant. And that's exactly what they need to do. But Hennessy, he'll seize this opportunity and he'll go for it again. But this time, not only is Tommy Boy there to shut down I'm at a massive pick, but the toxic gas is there perfectly as well. Derp now the second kill for Kettering, shutting down Jetcon in this early push without much information is costing Akron a lot here. Surma though, He'll have an answer. He'll clear down below. He'll cut down Bucca, who is looking to play a little bit of vertical of his own. And now with 30 seconds left, Akron look to make their push. Surma's still holding the flank downstairs, trying to deny any insertion from Kettering. And the bomb's also going to have to start to find its way on the deck. Those vertical holes are going to be so imperative for Kettering to get that back. What the that Diffusey is going to go down, but not out. It's a 1v2 post plant with Surma on the big window repel. He has to be careful in this position. He can get run out on, but I met in his Claymore. They were prepared for that exact same scenario. And now it's going to be strong positioning on this window once again. Anomaly is going to have to take this gunfight sooner rather than later. And Surma knows us all too well. Plane is incredibly passive. Going to utilize Father Time, that clock, as the best asset as possible. Anomaly is going to attempt that Diffuse, but he's going to get off it trying to bait that aggression coming out from Surma. It's a seven second defuse talk and it's going to be all about that time. Now it's pretty much foregone at this point. He's going to have to stick it and Surma knows it too well. Perfect headshot and a great round for Akron. Yeah, a great victory there from Akron, but it didn't happen in the cleanest way possible. But the same can be said for Kettering in the way that they denied the plant from going down initially. I mean, until those last few moments, it looked like Kettering I mean, they had it all going for them. They were able to deny the coverage and actually take down the planter eventually when the bomb did go down. But unfortunately, the way they got there, it was it was really messy. I mean, the toxic canisters, they did go down. But the one thing that was missing to me was that sense of calm that you get from a defensive team when they still have echo drones in play, when you still have toxic canisters. Generally, you're gonna see a defensive team which is more than happy to sit back, relax, and let a, fl a floundering attacking team attempt to get the bomb down. That's not what we saw there. We saw Kettering get aggressive. They said, oh gosh, Akron is here at our door again. They're knocking and we want to force them away. They did that. I'll give them credit for that, but they did it in a way that just, it, it, it allowed Akron to get a couple of opportunities. They didn't deal with Surma down below, and not only did that cost them the lives of both the player down below and your Echo with some vertical play, but it cost you in the post plant. A perfectly post plant, a lot of P's there, from Surma. Just excellent stuff all around the Nomad playing that one perfectly, throwing in that flash grenade. Anomaly was not able to bait that diffuser. He didn't even attempt to bait the diffuser until there were only 10 seconds left, at which point Surma knew he had all the confidence in the world. He could take his time. He could play that window repel perfectly, and that he did. Akron, a well-deserved round number four. Well, since we love things that start with P, Papa P is going to be the character that we need to look at this lobby because he is going to be that chief roamer. Not in the aspect that there aren't other roamers on the pitch, but he's going to be the one that's going to be rotating and filling in the gaps when somebody falls or when he needs to help out one of his teammates. That was his positioning back in round two over by those cool vibe stairs, but he never really found himself finding that impact. Now, as soon as his teammates get swung, he needs to hightail it over to that position and that way they can set up like that multi-pronged assault where there's two crossfires on the same position. With him being... It's going to really hurt the positions of Bucca as well as Derp, who are now solo roaming. 
Hennessy looking to deal with the first roamer. He hasn't been fully successful, but, oh, well, partly so. Bucca has lost 75 HP, and, well, he's still eager to get aggressive. Bucca, nice shot there. He'll take the head of Surma, losing more health for it, but that skirmish going in the favor of Kettering and a massive early frag to get. That's going to remove some air jabs from play. That's going to give you a little bit more comfort on the roam, and for Akron, well, that'll delay the amount of comfort they're able to get as they go forth with this roam clear. We are going to see Jetcon pushing his way up. Cool vibes, though. He's not going to waste any time in doing this because Hennessy is already upstairs, clearing things out with his Gemini clone and, well, now positioning himself in that very spot. But look at this. Bucka. He's still creeping around. You've got two players over in main lobby, two players on the objective. This Kettering defense is in this clear there it is i think as a c4 toss no jetcon goes down somehow it's going to be anomaly finishing that kill our does get a response though finally finishing off the cap can and i'm at he's woken up and found two good swing there from tommy boy he'll answer back and keep this one even in a 2v2 situation but I, but now akron with only 50 seconds left they find themselves on the back foot they're going to have to find themselves a strategy where they're able to push together and go in through these fatal funnels. Right now, it's all going to be about that jungle door frame. Hennessy just removes, and it's going to get better for Akron Zips as they storm themselves straight into the bomb sign. Again, we're talking about these split executes. We're talking about the defense setting that up. But well, the Akron Zips, they can do it themselves. Yeah, great job there in the 2v2. I mean, maintaining calm is just... I mean, you can just see the experience of this team and all of these players just come out in the way they play. You know, having casted every collegiate team out there. There, there is a huge difference between, you know, players like everyone on this Akron roster and, you know, some players who are just entering the scene for the first time. It's that... It's that just the poise that they walk in there. It's a 2v2 situation. The time is dwindling. You've got yellow smoke in your face. Most people are panicking in that same situation. But, you know, with the experience and the 11 collegiate championship titles that, you know, the, this team has under their belt, they're, they're going to walk in there with confidence. They are going to walk in there knowing that the time is dwindling, but just not caring. They're going to move in there carefully with intel and pushing together. That is what's key there. You saw it perfectly. The double swing, one from the kitchen window, one from the kitchen door. So even if one of them were to lose out in that engagement, you know a trade would be there. You know you'd have two people checking the same angle. Excellent play from Akron. That's why they're so powerful on this map when they go on the attack. I mean, defense as well, as we'll see in just one to bring things back. If they can secure the second defensive round, I am not going to count them out of this matchup. Coastline is strange. It can be attacker-sided, defensive-sided. It can be whatever you want it to be. And for Kettering, they want it to be attacker-sided, but they want to find at least one more round here. They need to do so if they want to have a shot. And this is the opportunity to change up your attacking vectors. Use VIP, that lounge, as that apex position where you cut off all those rotations. You can do something similar from above if you're able to actually go for that hard breach gadgetry. But unfortunately to you, you have a mute jammer on that wall. So if you want to remove it, well, you're going to have to do it with bullets itself. And the opportunity cost of that, well, it's going to come down to actually removing that hookah player altogether. So you're just going to have to take gunfights. Hennessy is armed and ready to do exactly that. He's going to walk in through Hookah, but no information swings once again. It's an onslaught upstairs, and Kettering is in our favor. Oh, well, Jetcon has a response for that one. He'll swing out onto Cool Vibes. He'll remove Tommy Boy, and he'll return things into a 3v3. I'm at. He's got some intel. He knows what he's working with, and a perfect wall bang right onto Papa P. Poor guy. He's now down on his back in a tough position to be revived both of his teammates should likely be on this first floor and that means your jaeger is going to be stuck in vip until the end of his days but what you do still have is two strong anchors strong gunners near the site and ready to lock this down anomaly 
He's positioned in Sunrise, and you've got Derp still on that kitchen side and that main lobby side. Arguably, they've got the two perfect positions. They haven't been caught out. They haven't been isolated in any position or another. They can deny a lot of different plants from where they are right now, and they still can control both of these objectives. Anomaly. Proving that, dealing a lot of damage onto Jetcon right now. He's going to get in a bit of a skirmish here over in Blue Bar, but for in game. But Arv, he'll switch things up right away. He'll go for this plant. Top P eventually finished off, but we can see that Derp, his position is now known. And Akron, now with the bomb on the deck, it's time to capitalize on that information. The defenders are forced to evolve into an attacking force, retaking their own bomb site. They're stuck over there in pink. Derp has no idea where the bullets are coming from, and Mymat's flying down the pool of Vime stairs, giving himself a nice sweet two-piece. And that's just the power of Akron being shown once again. They're able to throw bodies at the problem, and we're talking about establishing that crossfire coming in through VIP. Akron did that perfectly. Now, one mistake that Kettering did, they recalled Derp a little bit too soon he should have stayed on that first floor over by reception holding that long 90 degree crossfire into blue bar that would have stopped the entire plant down akron was droning out that position but they did it midway through that plant that means they had no true information over losing his life in that scenario well it wasn't only the planter who nearly lost his life but uh it's Kettering, whose life on coastline may be running out. They did not get that round, as I said, they really needed. They're sitting at a four-round deficit, now going on to the attack. And, well, Chief, we've both bomb. seen Akron on defense on this map countless times, and we know how terrifying it is for attacking teams. I mean, Akron, they exude confidence when they're on defense. They play really loose. They play just they managed to play loose and together at the same time and what i mean by loose is they don't shy away from just running all over the map and taking map control at any given time you're you're, you're gonna see players rotating all up and down this top floor you're gonna see them rotating all the way around towards security and the offices side exactly where we see i'm at setting up these mozzie pests right now just hunting ground and that's exactly what Kettering are gonna need to stop they're gonna be bringing out a lot of interesting things to do so you've got the nomad of course which is that perfect instrument to stop the roam but you've got the nook play as well coming out from Derp. now this is not something you'll see in pretty much any serious competitive matchup but sometimes sometimes it can be that element of surprise that you need and for Kettering that is everything right now they need to pull out all the stops pull out all the surprises and an operator with a bicycle helmet and a uh, mop over her face sometimes that is the exact surprise you need so chalet is not in our map pool currently we still have theme park we've actually seen some nook play on chalet coming down the blue stairs when some of the brave rosters are going for that basement hole there's a reason why basement isn't a strong bomb site and neither was that pick unfortunately a six pick away from the glass which isn't a good operator at all but into a nook well cached and sometimes like you mentioned you need to experiment do something different but this experimentation it erupted in the face of Kettering Bomb located by attack. I mean they have the intel to work with and I'm I'm not gonna fault dirt for losing the engagement you're coming up against I'm at I'm not gonna expect that much of anybody on the other side of that gun but I do expect Kettering to play that situation a little bit cleaner they knew exactly where he was from the moment he was spawn peeking over in main lobby to the moment he rotated in kitchen we saw their drones what we didn't see was more than one Kettering attacker attempt to challenge him at a time you can't take 1v1s with defenders, ever. But especially when they're anyone on this Akron team, when you're get coming up against, you know, any of these ridiculous roamers, you need to be so, so careful. And, well, right now, it seems that it's the carefulness of Akron that needs to be put into question. Both Jetcon and Arv have fallen out of this round, or at least temporarily, as IMAT will now go to revive his down. Both Arv has been picked up as well now, so 
That chance is slimming every moment, but Kettering have all of their bases covered at the moment. They're in the perfect position to get the execute. It's just about getting this decision to happen. Anomaly, he'll take a bit of damage, but he's still in this fight. He's still got the diffuser in his hands. We gotta see an execute. The Hail Mary is gonna have to come in for Kettering. Now also Akron, they're suffering in the utility department. They only have those smoke grenades available. And Bucca on this upside down repel is gonna be forced to look at two different angles, but it's also gonna force Akron to go for these swings. They have to pounce back into their bottom sign, and the pants is gonna come from Imat and Arv. But trades are still in favor of Kettering. It's a 2v2 post plan, and the attacker is being outside. Those power positions are gonna be so oppressive against Akron. But Hennessy, he has an answer to say to that, and it's gonna be a very similar position that we saw a few rounds ago. It is going to be that Nomad on the repel of Big Window, force and holding these crossfires. Tommy Boy sitting back. Skirmish Hennessy trying to force the issue. Oh no, Tommy Boy is gonna flash himself. Hennessy, he'll tease the diffuser for one last time, but time is the very problem. He's got no more of it to defuse this. He's got to sit back. Tommy Boy's going to run away and he will be sure to solidify the last kill because Hennessy was just looking to get spicy. Kettering, they will take an attacking round. It's round number seven going in their favor and they will start to reduce this round deficit. Still a long way to go. Still a lot of ground to make up, but that's a good start. And the problem with Akron was they waste a lot of time, which is great. But as soon as they hit in that sub 90 second mark, they started to waste utility haphazardly. We saw preset nitros without any information. The Valkyrie cameras, well, they're either outside or in different positions. So they're just going off audio cues to grab those kills. And the problem with that, audio can be inaccurate sometimes. Maybe they're on the other exactly where that player is so you'd be better off waiting for that post plan to come through or better yet when that diffuser is actually going on that ground because you can either shoot them from underneath since you have pre-established murder holes or you can have that explosion start to propagate out and kill any of those crossfires that way when you have to crash back onto that b bomb site you're doing it with explosions as well as hopefully some of those soft targets already down but not out Well, unlike what we saw from Kettering on their defensive half, Akron are not afraid to repeat the same objective. We're going to see Hookah and Billiards play out once again. And I'm interested to see if we've got any changes coming out. Obviously, I'm at taking a hell of a lot of damage in the prep phase. That's one change, not positive, though. But the other one I would say is positive is Jetcon switching from the cap can over to the Vigil. We have Hennessy on the Jaeger, which is something that's a little bit be more of that anchor with the Jaeger roll given over to Jetcon, your secondary roamer and big gun fragger. But we all know how well Hennessy can play in this kind of situation. And well, we all know how the Vigil can suit any of these roamers on the Akron side. Jetcon, his job now to be as elusive as possible. Of course, everyone in the community loves to make fun of Jetcon's height, and I'll join them on this one. His size should make it easier for him to be dip, dashing, and dodging all around this map, and he should have a good time hiding from the uh, from the attackers. You know, sometimes if you could just load aid your character into the virtual server, you know, it'd be interesting to say the least. But I guess you know that'd make me a bad target because I'd always have my head removed every single you know twist and turn, just like Buck is trying to do, holding mouse one with his GA, just sending bolts down range and Attack seeing if he can grab a free headshot. Now, there's nothing wrong with that type of strategy. You're just forcing Akron not to peek you, and when you're going against Akron, when I'm at sitting at 16 and four ahead but just him being afraid to peek that could actually allow your troops to start to move into the map and speaking of that we're going to see the nook do exactly that but grabbed out by a vertical camera answered by an impact grenade once again derp on the unique pick not going to find the impact he wanted what is derp doing there he pushes an aqua and he sits in a corner I, I, i'm trying to figure that out i guess it's a nook and there's no logic and reason to even the operator pick so maybe there isn't much to figure out from that play but a questionable early maneuver is going to result in the loss of well again the same player you lost in that early engagement in the previous round they didn't seem to mind 
Tommy Boy won't mind this round either. He'll answer it right on back. This one on to IMAT, so a good pick in response. You lose a nook and you take out IMAT. I'll take that trade anytime. Tommy Boy now with a second. He'll remove Hennessy, making this one further in the Kettering. And Rather good. Arb might be getting aggressive here. He'll look to find an answer, but for now, it's his toxic smoke. The impact that's being felt. What? Okay, Arb. He'll get a wall bang right onto Bucka, who found himself inside the objective. And now, a C4 perfectly placed from Surma will end the life, or at least for now, of Papa P. Anomaly taking a bit of damage there, so is Tommy Second Boy. Flat. And with that final blow that Jetcon now delivered, it's a 2v3 with Kettering with 10 seconds left, no health to work with. They've got to get going. And not only the first player to push on in, but Surma has an angle from below. And Tommy Boy isn't even inside the building. There goes the time, hitting triple zeros. And Akron, they'll take round number eight on time, not allowing anyone to even make it into the objective. Yeah, Kettering was struggling to even identify what their minigame was and what strategy they wanted to go for. Because when you're an IGL, your job is to say, I want to go for a hookah plant or a billiards plant. And then you reverse engineer that goal. Kettering, on the other hand, they were all over the place. And they actually had utility and operators to help with that plant. Even if you want to be a sneaky beaky nook, coming in and bypassing cameras, there's nothing wrong with that because she could actually work out well. One of the strengths for Akron is that information game from Valkyrie, but you also have an IQ in play. Why isn't Bucca using those IQ scanners on the roof to say, hey, Nook, there's an IQ camera, or there's a Valkyrie camera right in front of you. You can Attack shoot that and you can still be bomb. sneaky in a corner because the whole idea for Kettering there was to be able to take map control in a swift manner and catch Attack Akron off in a bad rotation. Bomb. On face, at face value, that's a good strategy, but again, they never really used their entire arsenal of utility to actually achieve that ultimate goal. Well, the ultimate goal of Kettering, that is bringing this score back to even and sending us now to overtime, is looking less achievable by... To six rounds under their belt, and of course, that means they are on match point. Could be seeing the final round of this one unfold. With Kettering now forced to attack Kitchen. Now that Akron have changed things up. In terms of this defensive setup, they're keeping things loose on their operator selections as well. Jet Khan, he has switched back over to the Jaeger instead of the Vigil. Hennessy back onto his more typical role of the Mute. And Imat will be pulling out the Aruni. We saw this on the side of Kettering on their defense. And now we're going to see it from Akron for the first time as well. We can also see some of the remodeling that Imat has done on this top floor. He has been punching walls for the last minute and a half and we can see that on that hookah and billiard side there is a lot of damage that he's done to make sure that when Kettering push on through there is nowhere they can be fully safe from you saw that drone from Derp pushing on into VIP you can see Papa here they're seeing this vertical destruction now who are on the top floor looking to capitalize on that destruction this is going to be a next level mini game that Kettering has to deal with because you're highlighting these long angles from IMAC. They're going to be extremely oppressive. That's going to force the drone economy of Kettering to push over by that aqua bar and try to pinch him. Now, the problem is being in a Rooney, she can just punch one of those top hatches and just fall down into offices. But here's Derp trying to alleviate that pressure. And there's IMAC. He knows his position was compromised and he's not going to waste any time hightailing out there. Perfect use of his actual body because he's wasted 90 seconds without really being a true threat to the members of Kettering. I mean, that, that's all you can really ask for your roamers sometimes. I mean, it's not all about getting kills. And, and if you want a video tutorial about exactly how you should be roaming on Coastline, save this last couple of minutes because I'm at has done a perfect job. Jetcon, he may be doing a less perfect job. Akron need to find a couple of frags. Imat and Arv are going to get one each. Sure, there is an answer. Imat has fallen, but look who's here. The Jaeger hiding out in Hookah. He'll cut down Bucca. That is a case of Bucca yelling, why was he there? And Chief, I know you love to highlight this point, but it, like you say all the time, if you find yourself in a situation like that as an attacker, 
it is your fault. You have done something yeah, wrong. You got to get your drone work and you got to polish up that coordination. Yeah, there's more than enough time to continue with your drone game. And Arv was playing that angle once before, and he's going to get fried the Look second the time he swings at an incredible showing of mechanical skill from Derp. Now he's going to have to take the remainder of these gunfights at 5 HP. So one shot will be his undoing, and all of Kettering is still on that top floor. They're going to have to jump through these hatches and just sprint towards the bomb site, going for broke. And it's starting to look like this will be an accurate victory with three seconds left. There's the by one finish off by the ratting of jetcon great positioning by him and akron take map one gotta admit that is not necessarily how i expected it would go i thought kettering maybe they'd get a couple more rounds maybe they'd show us a little bit more especially on that defensive side but nonetheless an akron victory on coastline has nobody watching this completely bamboozled we're all like okay Coastline, it's Akron's map, that's fine. Where Kettering make their impact, that will come on Theme Park. They said they were prepping it. They said they're putting in this work on the second and more unknown map to the collegiate scene. So, Chief, I am really wondering, you know, what kind of lessons we can take from Coastline and apply them to Theme Park. What kind of things can we expect from Kettering, a team that I don't know if I've ever seen them play Theme Park, maybe only like once or twice. So it's going to start off with strong goal setting. What do you want to do? Moving to theme park, if you're going for a thrown plant, well, what stages do you need to checklist it is going to be a lot of that roam clear because we're joking about why is he in that corner well that's showing a structural flaw to the attacking roster of Kettering where they're leaving such a large opening available that they're just making mistakes and again you can't make a mistake against a team like Akron they're going to exploit that at every single twist and turn so if you want to drop through a hatch over by hookah well make sure you have a drone going before that or maybe bring an eye on us so you have a clone that's able to do that you have to be prepared for Akron and their rat strats because they love to do it. That's a hallmark of this roster. And there's, again, a lot of odds of them doing that exact same strategy. And, you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, do your homework. Well, the good thing is we can see exactly what kind of homework Kettering did when we get to map two, which we will get to after a short break. Stick around. We'll be right back.
you make me want to talk back Talk back to you Say you say you like that If I hate you then find someone new Baby but you know Hello, it's a pleasure to welcome you back to CR6, the premier invite league. We currently find ourselves in the semifinals, Akron versus Kettering. And so far, Akron zips, while well, they have a one map advantage, they took Coastline in a swift 7-2 fashion. Jonah will be joining me once again on the casting desk. My friend, welcome back. Good to be back. A nice five-minute break, feeling refreshed and feeling hopeful. Now, I know it's probably the minority of people out there, but yes, I am hopeful <laughs> of Kettering on theme park. If it were any other map, I'd say Akron have an overwhelming advantage and Kettering, they've got a really sweat where Kettering have the perfect opportunity to capitalize on this. Bringing a team to theme park that doesn't usually go to theme park could be perfect, especially because like I like Bucka told me pre-match, they've been prepping this map, or at least I think that's what he said. So <laughs> when you come down to theme park, it's all about putting in the work, especially in collegiate when teams don't play this map very often. When there's a lot of maps out there or a handful of maps out there that just don't get played very often, this is when prep comes in more than ever. Now, I don't know if Kettering has been prepping Akron strats on theme park and countering that specifically, or if they've been refining their own theme park strategies. Because if they have, even if they've just been working on their own stuff, I cannot wait to see what they're going to bring out. I'm really excited to see how they can make this one nice and even. It is one of the most, if not the most defensive-sided map in Siege that's ever been in Siege, especially in the competitive pool. And with Akron starting out on defense, as it would... Kettering will need to have a very clean attacking half. That is where the difference is made on a defensive map like this. And it's going to be the big question, how are they going to achieve that clean half? What are they going to do differently? How are they going to learn from the mistakes from Coastline? And you know, maybe this is an opportunity to bring in a previous meta, and particularly a band that we saw well over a year ago. That was Mute Bands. Back in Mute Mozzie combinations, it was so darn oppressive, teams had to remove that powerhouse of information denial. And why that might not make sense at the face value, look at the strengths of Akron. It's their ability to roam and have map control. If you remove a cornerstone of that defense, that will allow you, Kettering, to take map control in a faster manner and hopefully take gunfights immediately to those roamers. I'm interested to see exactly, you know, how Kettering want to approach this on attack. I mean, of the competitive siege world, there really is only one way it unfolds, and that is the attack happens when there's 10 seconds left. That's finally when you can see the objective. That's finally when you can get onto the site. And this is where Kettering, I think, will need to change it up. I don't think going with that 20 second meta is going to be a strategy they can rely on here. And maybe taking off the Valkyrie is, is a perfect solution to that, right? You don't have to deal with that extra intel off site. You don't have to deal with potentially so much extra information at the fingertips of the roamers and theoretically you should be able to deal with those roamers a little bit quicker than before akron they'll go with the kaid band so they'll remove that electro claw which does make sense considering you have the thatcher band as well and on that uh, throne room and armory site especially those Kaid Electro Claws can be particularly powerful. But we'll get right on into round number one, and we'll see exactly how Kettering are going to make So I'm interested to see actually what that's going to shape up like, because you don't often see a Monty on theme. So we're hypothesizing ways that Kettering can take that map control. We're talking about, well, if you remove that mute, well, that's going to be another insertion point. But the other in that stick, as you're mentioning, is going to be information. Valkyrie will fill in that niche as well. Six picks all around. You're talking about Monty being a factor. Unfortunately, Buck is going to be forced into play. And that makes sense. With Sledge off the board, somebody has to be the chief soft destructor. The person tasked with...
with removing yeah. as much of that ceiling as possible. Now, Akron did not go to that primary bomb site of Throne Room. They tried to mix it up with that secondary bomb site of Dorms, but Buck still could be useful. It will allow you to remodel a lot of the east side of the map over by Cash, or if Kettering goes for a west execute through Cafe, well, you can still accomplish the same goals, opening up new and different lines of sight. Now, with Akron expanding themselves, one of the paradox of an IGL. Do you attack where all of the reinforcements, all the utility is, or do you go from the other side of the map where there's no utility? It, it, it's a common question, and it's it's hard it's hard to make that decision usually because normally where the defense is going to set up the majority of that utility, that is where the default attacking approach is, right? It's where the most logical and the safest bet for attackers is. But when there is so much utility there, it, it very well may, may be the safer bet to avoid it completely, circumvent all of that setup and go from the other side. And on Theme Park, that is a decision we actually see come up a lot just because the way this map works, the amount of buffer rooms, that is rooms between the objective and the outside of the map, just so much of that is a factor and well, Kettering, they are not going to elect to circumvent it. They're going to head straight on into that utility. And already, they are going to be punished for it. Derp, the first player to fall. Not the way you wanted to begin. But now that Papa P has finished that one off, or finished I'm at off, the Frost, who is peeking out from waiting room, will be felled as well. So that's a good equalizing blow. And Derp for I'm at, I think it's a fair trade to kick things off. So Kettering not over yet they've still got things going in round number one it's just about the speed with which they're going to get this rest of the attack going well they're going to do a lot of damage to surma every damage but one hp worth but they're not going to be able to stop arv from swinging out and claiming a kill of his own kettering needs just to slow down this attacking roll Bucka saw the opening and he pushed with his drones, but he only saw one piece of the puzzle. He didn't connect the entire picture. That was that deployable shield and the tandem ability for Akron to swing when one of their teammates is being pressured. And to make that storyline even more sweet for Akron, they have now reinforced that wall altogether. And Kettering has to repeat that step once again. But there is lurking pressure. Isolated in a corner. Everybody from Kettering thought he rotated away, and Surma finds one. Forced to go to the shotgun, unable to finish anything else off. And now it's just on the back of Papa P. He's in a crossfire with bullets whizzing over his head, looking in every direction. But so far, Akron's not presenting themselves. Yeah, the classic problem, Kettering. They got a little bit too eager to push on through, and they had not covered all of their bases. Unfortunate for them, that's going to leave Papa P alone in a 1v3 situation. It's your Zofia. It's a big fragger, so it's not fully out of the question he can pull this off, but he is walking into a brutal crossfire, and not to mention a bullet hole angle being held by Jetcon. And yes, the bullet hole angle will win Akron out the round. Always hurts to say that here. And wow, we're actually not going to see that it was a bullet hole angle because uh, a little bit of a spectator bug there. But regardless... Kettering certainly not happy with the way that round ended and the way the round unfolded as the first round of theme park. So if we're able to pull parallels from traditional sports, if we look at racing cars, for example, there's a saying in racing cars, <laughs> and it's called slow down to go faster because far too often drivers just want to, you know, mash down the throttle and zoom. The problem is that's never the optimal way of driving on a racetrack. Sometimes you need to breathe, slow things down. And if you're taking a corner, if you want to be quick, well, maybe you count one, two, three, and then start your turn. That way your car is going to have the optimal arc around the the corner and be able just to continue that momentum forward but if you just go pedal to the metal well you're gonna fly off the track and Kettering is in that exact same scenario they were pedal to the metal they went so fast that they missed an opening entirely exactly. if they were to okay. one two three breathe and execute Bucko wouldn't have challenged that deployable shield as well as Surma in that close angle. He would have called in for additional reinforcements and most likely have been Sophia with his stun lock able to isolate and then you go for the next front of you. And the only way to do that is sometimes just take a breath. Well, I'll take a moment to take a breath. Good to uh, 
relax and see exactly how Kettering are going to bring this one back. I said that if they wanted success on theme park, it's got to come on the attacking side, and uh, I wasn't lying when I said that. <laughs> and going forward to round number two, it's going to need to look a lot different than the first one. They can, they can afford a couple of rounds to work out the kinks. It's theme park after all. You're not going to find more than three attacking rounds even on your best day against the worst team. But what they need to do here is get things going as soon as possible. Akron with momentum and with confidence. More confidence than they already have is a big, big danger for any team. But especially a team attacking on a map like theme park. I've already talked a little bit about the buffer rooms this map sharing that quality to a map like villa or a lot of other maps that aren't even in the competitive map pool but so powerful and so hard to deal with in that previous round we saw a perfect example of that i'm at finding a kill on that roam surma finding a kill just proning behind a wall tucking in one of those very buffer rooms we need to see kettering clean up that roam clear and it starts right now it starts the moment they enter the building we can see their drone work it's coming through right now they have lost only three four drones so they are in a good position to make this one happen we can see the gridlock in play so a perfect operator to help you deal with that roam it's just a matter of covering every single inch of this top floor because if you don't you'll find yourself in a very rough position when it comes to your execute so far, Kettering, they've actually done a good job of addressing the mistakes that they've been making, not only in our first map, but what they did in round one. They realize that offside pressure is going to be critical for them to remove, and they're trying to do that in a controlled manner. But they might need to rotate somebody over to the barrel's hatch to stop the rotation from behind. Our Playing underneath, just able to hold Mouse 1, flicking bullets through the wall, able to do exactly what they do best, winning those engagements. But unfortunately, the Nitro Cell will not connect, and I'm at still offsite, roaming and running around. He's also the absolute nuisance, and he's retaking that second floor. I mean, this is just... I mean, this is just typical Akron shenanigans right now, and it's and it, it, it's what works for them. This is what they bring out on every map. They bring out such confidence and such gun skill that it is hard for really any attacking team to deal with. Kettering struggling with that yet again, but the one thing they do have going for them is a plethora of vertical play. They're opening up every single angle onto the objective below, and they're doing a good job of forcing these anchors to scramble around. What they haven't been able to do, however, is get any picks, and that is something that is going to make what is the next phase of this attack, the transition into the execute, so much harder. Not only do you have off-site players to deal with, but the objective itself is... He'll find the kill on the Jetcon, the player overtucked in bathrooms, holding off that yellow stairs pressure, but IMAT will now take up that very same position. It's Surma to find a kill, IMAT will find another one as well, but Bucka finds two, now three of his own, and with Papa P trading out with Surma, it is Kettering. With one man standing, they will take round number two, an excellent turn of events for them. That's the textbook example of just saying, you know what, we've realized we've made some mistakes off-site, not clearing the roamers. We're just going to go for the full execute because we know the roamers are going to have to crash back on their bomb site. If we hit this site fast enough, they are going to be late left dazed and winded and Akron was not prepared for that swift full send through that split door a great read by Kettering and that's just their knee-jerk reaction of identifying you know what maybe we can do something that Akron was not prepared for because I was about to say Kettering throughout that round they're really not understanding what cutoffs are made but that's another example of just being able to build a sandcastle after it's been washed away I gotta say, I'm I'm very impressed with that with that last second execute there. I mean, I I, I said going for the 10 second meta strategy would not be the play, but it worked for them. Excellent job. They did a good job approaching the site from every single angle and getting all that intel and communicating it quite perfectly. I mean. It takes a lot to get a good 10 second execute going. It takes individual gun skill and game sense, but it more so takes coordination. You're not gonna win 1v1 engagements over and over again. You need to just pummel your way in and force defenders to have to watch multiple angles at once. That is what Kettering did so well, not only punishing 
those 2v1 engagements, the, the, the angles the defenders had to try to find themselves out of, but they punished Akron for... They took advantage of the fact that there were some off-site players. I mean, of course Akron are going to play off-site. They know it. Everyone knows it. And Kettering, with that intel at their fingertips, either seeing those players itself or just assuming that they'd have some off-site pressure, pressure, they just full sent it into the site. They just held angles, cutting off those rotations, and they overwhelmed what remained of the on-site Akron presence. That is an excellent read of the situation. I don't know who called that or exactly the process of that decision-making, but I can tell you, excellent decision. It worked out well. I'm eager to see how they adjust from that and how they continue that very same success. It's a change-up for Akron. They are deciding not to bring out the bandit and they're going to just have mute be as the primary wall denial as well as impact nades now it's going to be a split strategy between those mute jammers some of them are upstairs but they're really not set in positions to hinder the drone economy of kettering because kettering has already found out exactly where akron is different operator lineup altogether you bring out that mozzie and he could have more impact at grabbing away those drones because again the assets of akron is their ability to delay time on these extended plays well it's working you're gonna have one player drop away he's not gonna get killed but instead it's hard who is the first player taken out so a good job there to kick things off for kettering but now they actually have intel of another player Hiding out in cafe. That's going to be IMAT. Derp watching this angle and delivering perfectly. Well done from them. Jetcon, though, he'll have an answer and a great flick and a shot onto Tommy Boy will be his second response to that. And the decisive roam clear of Kettering has been all but shut down. It's turned into a 3v3. You still have now this on site pressure building. Your thermite approaching from this yellow side. But. Now, with an even man count, Kettering no longer have the ease of access into the objective that they did. Players, and you don't have a lot of time to do it. One of the strengths of Akron's defense in round two is their ability to flank in through bathroom even after some of their players were felled. And now, well, that position isn't going to happen at all since everybody is on that bomb sign. And you can see Akron has made their own adjustments. They're actually going to bury one of their players over in splint. And this way, he can act as a gun turret, taking on both these angles simultaneously. And there's a flick from behind, laid out perfectly in the strategy for Akron. Derp's now going to fall. Anomaly is pushing in, identified by the evil eye itself and now he's just gonna be holding on this pillar hoping that papa p is able to do his job on the coverage which he'll be able to do it flawlessly so now jack on he has to go for the swing and kill the planter outright unable to do so the preparation for kettering you mentioned that they need to win rounds on attack and they're looking brilliant on their two executes on throne I mean, yeah, I mean, these rounds have gone in their favor and yet yeah, sure they haven't been the cleanest of performances, but Akron's just, I guess, inexperience on theme park. It obviously isn't inexperienced fully. They have, they've played this map a handful of times, but when one team is prepping this map and you haven't scrimmed it in months, because why would you? Chalet is now primarily in every map pool out there. It's going to be a weakness and Kettering are exploiting that. That's two rounds in a row now where it's looked like Akron have the upper hand and Kettering just steamroll on in and they change the storyline on its head. Excellent job there from Papa P, especially getting bomb. crucial kills on the coverage, making sure that Anomaly would survive try as he tried to get that plant down. I mean, that was another 2v3 situation. Kettering were not only on the back foot the entire round once their roam clear got removed from Jetcon, but they were on the back foot with five seconds left. The plant had to go on the ground, and the only thing standing between Akron and a round win was Papa P on the coverage. And, well, the Zofia, the coverage, it never... For Kettering open and shut. Well, of course, the roam clear was pretty stellar as well, but Papa P with those final three kills just solidified the round and now made Akron unusually so on the defensive half on theme park they now are struggling to find exactly where they want to defend they're gonna head back to their initial primary objective of daycare and bunks here and they are gonna work a very similar extension over towards that east side of the map 
Jackal's going to be in play as well. An operator designed to remove that roam pressure, and they will have a lot of roam pressure in their face. Akron has expanded three of their defenders over to the east, as well as I met on the first floor, which actually Bomb makes it four off-site players. So good drone economy from Kettering actually might lead them to changing everything up entirely. And indeed, that will be the case. Kettering, they learned their lesson from round one. They're going to bypass the West or the yeah, the West execute all together, and it's going to be Yeah, Jetcon the player standing in their way. Question is how aggressive is he gonna get? No doubt feeling confident from the previous round, but now with all the intel firmly in the hands of Kettering, Jetcon will think wisely before over contesting this position. But right now you can see that change, and you called it out perfectly, Chief Kettering are not going to go for that same east side approach that resulted in them walking straight into their six foot graves last time around. They're circumventing that and instead approaching from this northwest corner, this top arcade, this cafe side. And sure, they've got some players standing in their way. Jetcon being the first of many, but they don't have as much utility set up in this position. Akron, they don't have much time to rotate that utility around because this full Kettering pressure is already building. And so now Akron find themselves having to readjust and recoil. It's gonna help the, for the this defense that I'm at picks up a kill onto Bucca, the Jackal, who was hoping to, I guess, hop on in top Arcade or, or push from anywhere. An unwise solo push is going to result in the death of this team captain, but it's not going to dismantle this full Kettering push just yet. As I say that, though, things will be changing as Jetcon picks up a kill with a pistol. Tommy Boy has an answer to keep things relatively close. Good positioning so far from Akron as they have control of just about every single scenario throughout, except for their own bomb size. Anomaly exploits that all together. He rotates to a different position, starting to put the bomb down. Akron now has to Attacker's retake activated. their own bomb size, and they're going to be a little slow to do so. We're now in that post plan, and all the defenders are well outside of that bomb sign, and they're going to have to take engagements, but they have no business winning. Papa P has been so phenomenal in this series, but the same thing can be said for our picking up two with his SMG-11. The site crumbles back in favor of Akron. Oh, a good retake there. They forced Papa P to check about 100 different angles, and while he could check 99 and get kills on 99, that final angle... Great job there from Arv to be that final player, getting that fatal blow and finishing things out. So that'll keep things even. A 2-2 two to two score line now as Akron recover a little bit of that defensive presence, but it's still looking very good for Kettering right now. Regardless of the outcome of these next two rounds, it is a job well done for Kettering. They have secured two on attack, and that is more than enough on a map like Theme Park, where 5-1 and 4-2 to two splits are the most common thing you are going to get on this map. But they've got their sights set on this 3-3. Three to three. They still have two rounds to play and two rounds that could easily go in the attacking favor. Just based on what we've seen from Kettering, the amount of promise they show on this map is tremendous compared to what we saw on Coastline. We can see that Akron are finally realizing that, wait a minute, we've got a match on our hands and that same aggression that worked for us on Coastline is not going to work for us on Theme Park. Even though this map really enables a lot of roam and a lot of it down. They have a way to shut it down and kill all of these over-aggressive defenders. And sometimes it's not working. Sometimes they are getting caught off guard. But right now, when Kettering deal with those roamers, when they deal with the aggressive players, they are winning rounds. Just look at I'm at right now. The player who at this point in the previous map had about 10 kills to his name. He's only got three. His whole team has stepped up in the meantime, but shutting down IMAT is a perfect start for any successful Akron opponent to focus on. They've done that, not only shutting down IMAT, but every one of these big fraggers, and they are well on their way to a very successful half. They just got to continue it here as they go towards initiation and offices. And you summarized it best because, as you said, Kettering, when they're all synergized on the same wavelength, they're doing a great job of that roam clear. But part of round four was Derp solo pushing with that Jackal. He never even got an Inox scan off. Now, if he wants to actually truly use that utility, 
assertion point. Now, I'd like to hypothesize that Derp was using the Inox, but not actually grabbing the feet, but following the feet up the stairwells because he died over in the arcade stairs. Now, most players aren't going to just, you know, walk up a stairwell without some type of information. And again, it's fair to assume that the information was coming from that gadget. But again, it's all about the opportunity cost of that gadgetry. If you use a scanner, the feet will go away, but you will have a ping. If you don't scan, well, you have unlimited access to that defender's feet. Let's see how Kettering are approaching this. Right now, they're creeping on up from Cafe, just slowly sneaking their way in. And interestingly enough, Akron aren't extended on this side at all. There's no roamers in their way. That means that Kettering have gotten all the way up to the door of the objective for relatively free. It's still taking them 90 seconds, and that is no to work their way into this site. It is going to be made harder now that Surma and his UMP in hand removes the head of Bucca. But look at all the options Kettering have right now. They can approach from several different locations. They've got this angle opened up, this waiting room door, the castle barricade having been removed. They can now start to peer into this objective, but Akron can start to peer back. There goes the head of Derp. Your jackal is gone, wasted by Imat, who seems to believe that Kettering believed he was below. I think that is accurate, playing on that split hatch who's now rotated up and back up towards the dragon stairs to rejoin his team. Another round without the Inox scanner going off, and the situation is getting dire for Kettering. All outside towards the west, they're going to have to spawn in the bomb site, just rushing on through. But the spawn, well, it'll happen, but it's all going to be in body bags. Vakran will take round five with a flawless round and good positioning for them throughout crossfires to hold what angles to look at and Kettering was never able to break them down. I'm surprised honestly that the Kettering fell so quickly there. I mean they made such good progress early on they didn't lose a single attacker they pushed all the way up to the precipice of the objective but they kind of got stuck there. It seemed that Kettering were a little bit confused, as we were, why Akron weren't heavily contesting that entry point, like they had in every single previous round. But that very confusion, it, it, it's what worked for Akron. They just sat calmly, holding angles. They had every single wall reinforced, castle barricades in play. They had all of their angles covered so that when Kettering actually made it to the doorway, they couldn't do much but kind of wait for kills to be presented to them and, to locate and for the first time in a while Akron were not swinging with of course indicative of Akron's maturity and their skill but I also think indicative of the fact that Akron are realizing that Kettering are here to play they have they have prepped theme park they're good on theme park and they are here to really put up a fight I think we've seen a dramatic refocus from Akron just within these last two rounds and that means it's time for Kettering to make an adjustment as well no longer are kills or well no longer should kills be presented to them for free now we may not be being as aggressive of an Akron team right now Kettering may have to find their own success. They Five may need to really work for these executes here. They'll be switching it up and adding a buck in Attacks play. And without a sledge, of course, that's an operator you do really want to bring out to assist you on that vertical control. Maybe that's a perfect instrument to assist this type of execute they need to bring out. And to make that Buck storyline even sweeter, he has access to that new pocket thermite charge. So you can actually have Anomaly on that first floor just holding an angle like a flank watch would do. You can be set up in a position to take that vertical play he can then open up that split hatch because one of the strong areas that Akron had back in round three was split after they realized that Kettering wants to swing that position aggressively while well, they post some of their troops up in that scenario as soon as that hatch gets removed it is no longer safe to sit anywhere near that hatch because with the attackers having the high ground well they're going to punish you at every single twist and turn and there is an Inox scanner that we've been looking to see in this series it has caught somebody out, and that's somebody on the west side of the map. Well, they have to retreat away. Well, they've got Z pings on him as well. 
but they got z pings right on the toes of your jackal arv a perfectly placed c4 will end derp's life and arv again holding the vertical angle and finding a perfect headshot to further the destruction of this Kettering attack. Tommy Boy, he'll answer though. He'll cut the head of Jet Khan and he'll work their way back into this fight, but you've lost big, what are likely gonna be fraggers in this round. And that is not where you wanna be. You're saving graces, you still have your Thermite. You still got that hard breach. You still have your Gridlock. So you've got that flank watch potential and you still have your Buck. Bucca himself, he'll be bringing out the soft destruction capability that is so crucial for this objective and the take that it seems that Kettering are looking to manufacture. So if you're going to lose anybody, honestly, that's fine. The problem is it's Papa P. The man has been really fighting the frags right now. You've lost your big gun. The man who's actually hit double digits already. The only player in this entire lobby who's done so. So it's a big hindrance for this Kettering attack. And I guess so is every single Akron defender who is now willing to swing, now willing to get aggressive, given that they have the advantage. But I am at feeding that kill straight to Anomaly. Immediately that advantage has been neutralized. We're talking about Anomaly holding the flank. Now, he's a little bit more aggressive in that scenario, but still, he accomplishes that goal. And I'm at in every single of the three over into the yellow stairs. It worked the first time, and it hasn't worked since then. Kettering has adjusted and adapted. A full send in through split isn't going to work out well. Your question in your voice was perfectly said. He was trying to take that control, but it just never worked out. It's crumbling for Kettering. The Diffuser is going to be attempted to be stuck and finished off by that evil eye. Akron will take the half at 4-2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. hilarious. What, what a kill cam. Um, I'm not sure what Bucko was doing there. Um, I think he must have been hoping that when the plant was going down, Akron would just jump up and scramble around and try to deny the plant manually um, with their actual bullets from their gun so they wouldn't necessarily be ready for the drop down from split but b boy were they ready and bucka was just a, a, a clay pigeon i suppose just tossed up in the air or it was immediately shattered so i guess good attempt there from kettering i'd say that was the more perplexing round of their previous ones but like i said when we we're sitting at that two to two score line regardless of how round five and six unfold Kettering are still looking good, and I will stick to that statement. They have found two rounds on the theme park attack, so things, I'd argue, at this point are sitting perfectly even. It just comes down to their defense. Did this theme park prep pay off on attack? It certainly looked like it. They definitely had that momentum and that early attacking strength that many teams covet at this point, but they've got to repeat that on defense as well and double down on it. They've got to find this four round split and doing the so on theme park it is definitely achievable if there was any map you were close you were more certain of finding four rounds it would be this over any other but against akron now that's where you get a bit concerning they are an aggressive attacking team and we can see that game players who's always on this flex support role he's been finding frags on defense I suspect he'll be finding frags on attack, and if an ace is walking in with an AK-12 and is frying people, that is not a recipe for defensive success, so we're going to have to see how they really make this defense happen. And there's a lot of ways to achieve strong defenses. Sometimes you can use a reinforcement. Other times, you can do the exact opposite of a reinforcement. That comes down to those bullet hole punch holes, or the actual punch hole itself. And Kettering, they've established plenty of them on that top floor. And Akron, they're going to have to drone that out. Easier said than done, because the way light tends to go through those soft walls, sometimes you never actually notice that there are bullet holes there there until it's far too late but akron on the other hand they don't even want to deal with that instead they're actually going to take on that first floor first making sure there's no offside pressure from kettering and if they try to work away down a stairwell for example well there's gonna be a member well right now it's kettering who are saying hello through a variety of different angles so much so in the fact that hennessy is just spraying and praying hoping that a bullet can connect with 
anyone on defense seemingly terrified of pushing in through cash understandably so i mean you're dealing with so much of this early pressure and well, early lights. pressure that's been successful bucka has found the opening pick that one on jet con yeah Hennessy gets the response, but you've lost your Zofia now. You've lost a lot of that soft destruction capability, and Hennessy is very low on HP. You need a bullet to graze him, and he should go down. It's just about seizing that opportunity. We can see a very interesting extension coming out from Anomaly as well. He's playing over on the top of Arcade Stairs with some barbed wire to assist him, but the play over in Initiation Room... That's what Kettering are flexing right now. Derp, he'll find the kill onto the already low Hennessy. Arv, though, is there with the refrag. So, trade game, definitely working out for Akron, but they've traded themselves. Go, they still need to find these kills if they want to push into the objective. Akron has two posts up to the east, one over the north by those yellow stairs. One of those positions now being removed, and IMAT has gone back and forth between yellow and arcade, and that one evil eye is going to be his great hindrance. He's afraid of pushing up because of that information capitalized by Tommy Boy, and now it's all on Surma. As you highlighted, he was such a strong player throughout this series, but is he strong enough to find three? He's been droned out with those bullets whizzing over his head for certain Kettering knows knows where he is yeah he'll be walking into a just a disgusting crossfire here held by anomaly and tommy boy but it is tommy boy credited with that final kill the mp7 iron sights really uh i guess coming back in the meta here this was a play you used to see all the time back in the early days and well tommy boy will use it well in round number seven so kettering they open their defensive half off strong of the map doing so on daycare and bunks generally nowadays the primary objective for a lot of these defensive teams but what used to be the primary objective and what still is for the occasional team that is going to be armory and throne room so they're going to be heading downstairs next the site where vertical play often reigns supreme bucka he'll be pulling out the cap can so he'll be pulling out the imat strats here on this map of course imat loves to run the cap can and we've had interviews with buck a, a couple of times where we ask him about about, about the cap can and he usually says you know what sometimes if you're feeling it why not do it and in this case if you can get some frags and if you can get a couple of you know free explosions onto the attacking team as they push on in why not pull out those trip wires and maybe see what happens you know, when you're executing on this bomb site, you kind of have to look at it like you're a war planner. Or if you've seen any World War II document, alliance moving to the beachhead of the new team or the new powerhouse executing or, you know, attacking on the defenders. And that's the same idea here. You have to picture where are all the move or where are all the defenders going to be moving? How are you going to stop them from having that free reign? Because that was one of the hindrances for Akron in round seven, and it could be a hindrance here in round eight. You have to know where those defenders are, but more importantly, where they can go, because if you're able to stop them dead in their tracks, unable to return back to their bomb site, you can catch them in a position that they're never prepared for. And when you're just doing a east to west clear, sometimes you just don't have enough control to really take that fight to any of those defenders. And Akron, well, they don't have that many roadblocks in front of them. And if they do, well, it's going to be pressured from the two-pronged assault we were just highlighting, as it looks like IMAT is coming in from behind. You've got everyone pushing on through. Jetcon is he will be successful in that endeavor finding dirt but not before imat fell at the hands of bucka the cap can working out well for him i guess it was a cap can to cap can skirmish although imat in this case is on that jackal and well hennessy the buck is already using that skeleton key to its full effect oh no arv He's going to walk into a cap can trap and Bucca is going to be loving that. The trip wires we already talked about coming into full effect, but now the cap can is fully known. It's not going to stop Surma from running head on into another one and Hennessy nearly finding a brutally grisly fate in the same endeavor. Bucca calling out five for five. He may have hit all the traps. We, 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 did, we did see Surma shoot out one of them, so maybe four for five, but... Those Capcan traps just wreaked havoc on this attack. 
Job well done. Now Akron are walking into all of these gunfights with half or even less than that in terms of health remaining. So we see trap operators fall in because in Rainbow or in any FPS for that matter, you're always going to try to aim at head level. And cap can traps force you to look not at head level, but at feet level. And you're never really used to that. You've ingrained in your mind thousands of times whether or not you're running aim labs or Kovacs to always look in that head level. And when there's an object in game that forces you to look down, sometimes you just forget about its existence altogether. And unfortunately, Akron, them forgetting about that has cost them dearly. And Bucko is still lurking. He has a 3k in this round, converted into a Quan, potentially going for the A. Serm is in a position to die to that volley of bullets, but he still wants to get this kill. Bucka is temporarily silenced, but still it's a tall order for Akron Zip. All in the back of Serma, the hard support once again in this position. Yeah, the 1v3 here, Kettering looking like they are ready to equalize this scoreline right away. You've got even a player hunting Serma down a little bit, willing to swing out there on to take that fight as well. He'll smoke himself off, he'll sit in cafe, letting the time dwindle down, giving, giving Kettering that final moment. They needed to secure round number eight. So excellent job from them once again. They continue on their theme park prowess, on that display of theme park success. That's two defensive rounds in a row. I mean, it seems like we're having problems the Akron Zips. They want and know what they want to achieve. They want to have some type of multi-pronged assault from above, but where is the coordination to actually make that helpful? Why isn't IMAT being droned in? When you have Surma going nuclear, obviously you want him gun up, but you also have to remember what is your job in a round, and when you're playing hard support, Sometimes that means you are also that primary droner. So you have to, you know, say, I'll sit on spawn for the next minute or so just to make sure my gunner boys. I manage just walking out of cafe and getting absolutely obliterated. That's a fundamental mistake in the offense of Akron. And Akron, a team that is known for being fast on their clears, it is unlike them to just, you know, make such blatant mistakes and a harsh comparison to our first map, which is a 7-2 in favor of the Zips. Yeah, Akron are... They may be forced to really grind this one out here because Kettering had only had the equalize the score, but, I mean, they're in perfect position to get the advantage for the first time tonight. They're going to be electing to bring out initiation in office as their site of choice. Attackers are moving out to and uh, I'm interested to see how this one is going to go down. Because this is one of those sites that is hard to defend well. There's so many different areas you have to worry about. If we can you know, even zoom out and take a look at where the site falls in you know, this overall top floor. Look at both sides of this. The, the attack want to. There's so many avenues that they can approach from, and that means as a defensive team, you have to cover all of your bases. Part of that includes playing vertically. We can see a roamer down below. It's Bucca, who's looking to add to his eight kill tally, but you need to just hold on to map control for dear life as a defensive team, because there are just so many different ways that a team like Akron are just going to storm on in and and take located. that very control out of your hands i mean look look at this right now we have one site kind of understaffed it's office over here you got a player hiding out in vault and now anomaly tucking himself into that corner by the cash wall you've got a couple of options here for akron do they want to just pummel into this site dealing with the hard breach denial in the form of those bandit batteries and rolling on through there or are they going to approach from multiple sides and, and look to get that crossfire going? At least for now, it's just a one very East-focused attack coming out from Kettering, or rather Akron, but it's Kettering who... The P90 on Rook, apparently that's back in the meta, and he'll find the opening kill onto Hennessy, that's big. 
I mean, most people are still going for that MP5 simply because that two and a half times sight, but that P90 does have 50 bullets, and we know what the Alda is capable of with 82 bullets. And speaking about the Alda, Papa P, while he has gone quiet, Bucca has filled in that gap. But Papa P going quiet isn't him not clicking heads. Actually, it's just him and his teammates doing their jobs perfectly. Him playing that primary anchor role, he hasn't even needed to have that all to start to sing because his teammates off site are doing the exact job, wasting time, taking kills, and really hurting Akron. And case in point, Hennessy's early death now barked by that trade back and forth. That meme 90 still gnarly. Yeah, the trade going out and that's always going to be in the favor of Kettering right now because they still have the man advantage and you just trade your way to the grave as out he'll find the kill on Jusurma and Akron don't have an answer leaving Jetcon and Arv alone to pull some sort of miracle out and they only have 25 seconds to do it Arv will find one Jetcon looks for the second but Bucka does not allow it and now Arv looking to just make this one happen but anomaly not going to let that one happen Kettering they take round number nine they take the advantage and they take the overwhelming momentum in this map so much so that Akron are going to go for that time out they're going to look to regroup they're going to look to re-establish this early dominance because not only have Kettering won three defensive rounds in a row but they have now taken the lead for the first time tonight and this is a perfect use of this technical timeout. You start to break down, what am I doing wrong? How are we not achieving our objective? Again, most rosters objectives are to put that diffuser down on the ground. And the fundamental problem for Akron is whatever strategy that adjusting it to the defense that Kettering is bringing. Again, whether or not it's a roamer, whether or not it's a mini game like a maestro camera, or just pushing in through the bomb side, they've never really crossed off their mental checkboard of all the things that they need to do. And this is an opportunity for Akron to hopefully start to plan out their rounds moving forward. Now there's a couple people, Reaper just put out a video of the proper steps on how to attack on any map. Now, one thing I would like to add to that is have multiple plans. Whatever strategy you're going for, since we're going for bunk daycare, theme park, well, you can always push in from the east. You can always push into the west and have that drone economy dictate whether or not you're going for plan A or for plan B, or even have plan C be created on the fly based on that information. But you need to always be prepared, predicting and reacting to what the defenders are doing. Because if you're just pushing into the bomb site and your knee jerk reaction is to do X, you kind of are what's going on. So you never have to just knee jerk react. Well, as we are potentially heading back into what is the penultimate round of regulation and could be indeed the penultimate round of the map. Good thing to remind everyone exactly where we are in the overall overall picture of things. This is a semi-final match, of course, in the premier invite playoffs. And the winner of this match will go on to face the winner of Purdue versus Oklahoma State in the finals. And that is going to be a spicy one, to say the least. I believe Purdue is taking on Oklahoma State tomorrow, I believe off stream. And so it'll be interesting to see exactly how that one shapes up. I know that Oklahoma State won't be playing with their full roster. So Purdue would have even more of an advantage than they would coming into the night. But of course, the victor of that one, whether it be Purdue or Oklahoma State, will go against the winner of, of this series, which is turning out to be a little more contested people were expecting that is Kettering in the advantage while Akron are now uh, on the back foot so much so they are looking to regroup but if I'm Kettering right now I am not feeling quite comfortable yet Akron take an attack timeout to regroup and strategize that is intimidating to say the least and knowing how smart this team is knowing how flexible they can be i I'm excited to see what they're going to come out with. They know what site they're going to because that three site rotation has been completed. What kind of plan are they going to concoct? Well, right now, I'm more impressed with the Kettering plan, what they've been working so hard to achieve. We're talking in the pregame that Bucca had some tricks up his sleeve. He was going to be changing things up for his roster. And clearly, I think we found one of their strengths. 
theme park, a map that you said is atypical, and that's very true. And sometimes when you go against the powerhouse, Attackers you need, need to do the unexpected. Spot. If they expect you to go to a certain map pool, so that's always that underdog story. If you're a pitcher and you're new to professional play and they expect you to only throw fastballs, well, you try to throw as many sliders in there as possible. And the slider that Kettering has sent down range, Akron has swung and missed so far. But are they going to end up striking out or are they able to grab the Grand Slam in this series? A lot of pressure is going to be put here on round 10 because, again, Kettering takes this victory. That's going to be them on match point. I wouldn't be surprised if Akron go for something bold here, if we see them go for some kind of rush play or something more unexpected. Their attacking lineup doesn't indicate that. This is pretty much the same thing we've seen every time. You've got Surma as your sole hard breacher on the ace. You're putting Arv right now, who's your top fragger in this lobby on the Jackal. So definitely with a C70 in hand, you can find a good bit of at Akron are going for a pretty standard approach as well. You've got that security hatch open wide, and you've got some intel of exactly what you're dealing with on this extension. You're extending this defense from Kettering's point of view over into initiation and office, and that is exactly what you should be doing. You can waste so much time on this side of the map and even delay this attack from entering into that midpoint of this top floor, these buffer rooms, until those last 30 seconds. And if the objective is daycare and bunk, which in this case it is, if you can waste that much time and keep the attackers isolated off of the site itself, that's job well done. Well, Akron, they're pushing in still from the east. Derp is going to like to get far too aggressive. The flank up from the yellow stairs, almost bought out by Hennessy. And now Akron, they may not know it yet, but they have full control of the east side of the map. And I met, he's also tried this exact same position multiple times. Instead of getting aggressive, though, he's going to play it a lot more. Flank watch. If any members of Kettering try to reposition themselves by crossing in front of Cafe, well, they're going to be spotted out right by that member of Akron. Good positioning so far from them and great use of identifying exactly where some of that utility is from Kettering, softening up those defenses so they can prime themselves for a good execute. We can see that Buck is being hunted really, really hard right now by Arv, but it's not going to stop him from getting a kill onto IMAT. So much so that Bucca declaring the F in chat to pay respect to the Ash, who's now lost their life. Possibly a little bit of friendly banter coming out, but instead it's action on the site that Bucca is not a part of right now. Papa P finding Hennessy, but not before Jetcon could be credited with a kill of his own. Keeps things even though in a 3v3, but what it doesn't do is really deal with this offsite player. Now Akron have to be very careful the site is understaffed, but you still have a perfect flank to come up behind. Surma's going to take down Tommy Boy. That's going to leave Papa P alone, but he's going to find two kills, and that's a triple kill in him for the route, and now he'll finish things out. There's a quad for him. Whipping out the pistol, I believe, to finish out that final kill. Was that really? Yes, there it is. Excellent intel game coming out from Kettering. An excellent job there from Papa P on the site to shut down Akron at all, at all op all different turns right there and uh well that's match point for kettering 6-4 akron you can see them trying to make their adjustments but they're not addressing the fundamental problem of dealing with these roamers they need to actively create a mini game where their sole initial objective is to make sure they remove the roamers and if they fall off you either go for a fast site execute, but that won't be available because you haven't actually softened up that bomb site, or you continue on that roam clear. Because of the map, using it as a highway where they go back and forth, back and forth, it's just hindering Akron too much. You know, the Cold War, one of the things that the United States wanted to do was create a giant global network of roads so they can move their troops back and forth kettering is doing that exactly right now with their defense so if russia was ever to attack the united states well they'd blow up one of those roads akron they need to develop a nuke and they need to start making cutoffs 
It took me a second for my brain to process that analogy, but it, it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, you've got to really work on eliminating not only the flow of defensive players itself, but I mean, look at the flow of information that Kettering had at their fingertips in the previous round. They had they had pings on the last few players. They knew exactly where they were, and that enabled Papa P to just go massive with the Alda and, and with the pistol. Information on a map like this is so valuable, and Kettering are using it to perfection. That's what's earned them this match point position. They have not only match point, but a two-round cushion over Akron right now. And the team that came in to these Premier Playoffs unexpectedly, because UGA, of course, has been removed from the invite league. They are impressing a lot of people. They're, they're impressing me right now. I can say that for certain. I'm not going to speak to everyone out there, but I can tell you that Kettering looked good. And, well, they're going to be looking to, to finish this one out rather quickly. They've got two rounds to do it. You've got Derp playing a bit aggressive here in offices, look, looking to contest this early pressure coming in from Akron, but that over-aggression will be punished. This time, it is Kettering showing a little bit of that over-aggression and overconfidence rather than Akron on their defensive side previously. But this time, look at this. You've got a ping almost exactly where one of these top floor roamers is. Arv isn't quite certain exactly where to... The Jackal just will focus on creeping on up, maybe scanning a little bit of those feet so we can get a good idea of exactly what he's dealing with. But at least for Hennessy, he won't be able to deal with anything because he just had a C4 toss right to his feet. Good trade, though, from IMAT. He'll answer right back, and there goes Bucca to keep Akron in the advantage. Well, we were talking about that Cold War metaphor, and IMAT will play it out perfectly. He cut off the highway, made sure that, Ak that Kettering was unable to use it, and he gets that kill for the first time. The duel between Buck and IMAT, at least on the attacking stint of Akron, will go in favor of IMAT and Akron. Now, Kettering, for the first time in a very long time, they're going to find themselves with the man disadvantage. The majority of their troops are still on the bomb sign, but Akron, they're not quite ready to go for this execute. They still have a few more steps in front of them, continuing with that vertical holes, removing that ceiling, and also opening up yellow. So far, Akron has set themselves up for a linear execute, all with a plant in yellow these avenues into the objective the question is do they have the intel the five drones they have to work with that'll be enough to spot out the head of papa p as i matt will make that certain they didn't know tommy boy was busy fragging out so he will get one kill to make this one a little bit harder for akron but now with the plant going down and now with the coverage being applied from not only i matt on the objective but one player above this one is going to be tough for kettering there goes i matt he'll find one tommy boy responds with a kill of his own but now he's alone in a 1v2 situation Arv, he's on the vertical, and I'm at, he's 1 HP and prone in the objective. Tommy Boy needs to get aggressive here. A C4 could do that, but I'm at, will be hiding prone in what looked like a client side body. Yep, there it is, the eye of the bandit staring us right in the face, and he will claim the kill. That gives Akron just a bit to hang on in this map. We are now seeing round number 12, still match point for Kettering, but Akron only one round away from tying things up. Well, he definitely put the eye back into Matt. That on the struggle bus so far in this series allowed to evolve into his fragging potential. Sometimes you just need to mix things up enough or you read into a strategy enough. One of the problems of going to a bomb site multiple times is after a certain point, the attackers should be able to read into your defensive play. And if you've shown your strategies, change things up. That goes back to round two and three. Those were the thrown executes that Akron had on defense. They ended up losing both of them, but they're constantly evolving their strategies to attempt to, to deal off. with those round losses. Now, Kettering, having won thrown multiple times, they should still follow on that same mindset. Just because it's worked once, that doesn't mean it's going to work again. If we look at most bomb sites at max, they have a 66% chance of winning. That's the highest win rate on any bomb sites. Some of the bomb sites here on Throne are below 60. So that means half the time, more or less, you're going to be winning these bomb sites, which means you as an IGL or the hive mind of a defensive IGL 
you have to basically say, all right, let's change up our roam. Let's change up where we're positioning, putting some of that utility. So that way the attacking front, it's, they're not going to know quite as much as they once did. Kettering are going to go for the two-peat. They're going to head back to the very same objective here. And they'll be looking to respond to the Akron attacking success, which had been completely absent from this matchup until, of course, just one round to go. We've got IMAT. He'll work his way in from th this cafe side. No. located by attackers. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. This empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. It's in the air, like a blazing flare.
Well, everyone, we are back. We appreciate everyone for sticking with us. Apologize, of course, for the technical difficulties and uh, bear with us if anything happens in these few moments. But the good thing is, technical difficulties aside, we can get right on in to this series, which has all of a sudden took a turn for the spicy. If you're just joining us, Kettering winning out on Theme Park, looking very impressive. We now move on to Oregon. Chief, what do you think about this one? Well, I was critical of Kettering for making mistakes on their drone clear. They addressed those mistakes in the theme park, and it's almost like they hit Akron with the drone mistake bug because the Zips started to make those exact same mistakes. So we know that both teams are capable of strong roam clear, and we know that which means that they're capable of learning lessons. And that is the most important factor moving into Oregon. What are they going to bring to the table? What lessons have they learned? How are they going to reverse engineer it? And how are they going to be the team that is victorious? Because this is a best of three series and one of these rosters will be moving on to that grand final where they be playing against Purdue in Oklahoma State. Well, here we go. Well, the band phase now completed. We'll get on into round number one, where Akron will, of course, be starting out their defense, electing to do so on this basement site. So we'll see how they manufacture this. We can see based on their lineup, nothing too surprising here. The castle is the only thing that really catches my attention. You don't often see a castle on this downstairs objective. Generally, that is reserved for something of a Rome extension. And we've got a reinforcement put on this meeting hall wall towards what we call Z, the hallway between classroom and freezer and security. And um, a castle barricade there on the split door. Hennessy setting up this rotation. So indicates to me that we've got a pretty heavy Rome going down in meeting hall right now. Hennessy setting up some mute jammers as well opening up this e-box hatch so they have a rotation point. I would expect, yes, as this utility now indicates, we're going to see this extension extend all the way over into kitchen and security as well. So wrapping this map control all the way around from the main lobby side over towards that freezer side, Akron are going to be looking to stall off this top-down clear for as long as possible. And if you're familiar at all with Oregon, not just this iteration, but the original iteration of this map, this is the best way of paying homage to it because the best way of holding downstairs in basement was making your bomb site as big. You're stuck in a basement is to go vertical and Kettering. Well, they now know what is up in their favor, and now they have to make the decision. What do I attack? Do I clear out this meeting room floor? The only way to do so is to start upstairs in dorms, or do I go for a swift site execute? They're electing to go for the foremost of those options, clearing up that top floor. Very similar to how you'd execute on the meeting room bomb site. You remove all of those defenders in those positions, and then you have to reverse engineer that once again and go for the basement execute. It can take a lot of time, and it's also look like it's going to take a lot of hard breach gadgetries, thermite, Anomalies force to use one of them on that attic hatch. Well, hard breaching will get you at least a little bit more progress, but what it's not going to help with is finding IMAT, who's just tucking away and hiding in just about every place on this map and now finds himself all don't seem to be aware of this maybe a drone i mean i don't see anything nearby derp has his back towards him and hennessy with a distracting move is actually going to net him a kill m590 in hand walking straight up the freezer stairs bodying the yana and sending derp to the grave papa p now filling those shoes pushing down into freezer himself but he hasn't dealt with imat who's now opened up his own little rotation hole and now may be looking to get aggressive what he's doing is just waiting until these last few moments, waiting to an opportunity to strike where Kettering are committed to an execute and where he can single-handedly shut it down. We can have Bucka here pushing down the main stairs. He'll take quite a bit of damage, finished off by that Pokeball. And Tommy Boy, in fact, actually ends IMAT 
who actually got a little bit aggressive a little bit too quickly. But as Tommy Boy walks down Freezer, his push will be ended immediately by Hennessy. And now with 10 seconds left, Papa P has nowhere to go. He'll fry one, but now he has to get two more players. He'll line them up player and pillar but there's no time to do so surma a good angle is found and jetcon with the ald in hand finishes off anomaly a messy one but they'll take round one a perfect example the power of the extension upstairs kettering they did a wonderful job of clearing those first two floors and then they realized they looked at their wristwatch and said we have no more time we need to just start to fuddle through fatal funnels and well to their credit they actually did a wonderful job of taking those engagements and being able to win it outright and another aspect of that extended roam as you can see that kettering they had good coverage of flank drones but at a certain point they used so many of their normal drones clearing out the map they had to start to back Back up those drones and actually use them in active manner and that allowed imat to slip through the defenses he was almost able to get a kill but great reaction time for kettering able to stop that outright but that is just showing that lethality of akron and kettering coming at each other at the three series in that round even within it it was just so back and forth and I mean, I, I expect this one to be no different. We're gonna head upstairs. Akron shifting things around to kids and dorms now and shifting around their operator selection just a little bit. Jetcon is gonna be pulling out the Goyo, the operator who is more accustomed to the basement site, but we didn't see him there. Instead, he'll make his Oregon debut on this top floor objective instead. You can see a Goyo shield there placed down facing trophy, a pretty typical spot there. And we can also see those Wub Wubs, those Malusi Banshees in play. One of those in the middle of the room over in big dorms by the double window. Another one over in uh, games by that trophy door, which will be supported by a handful of ADSs and a couple of mute jammers as well. So a very similar strategy in terms of, you know, overall approach from Akron. They've got a lot of this anti-info in terms of the mute jammers. They've got a lot of info themselves. Delay, delay. Two of these players that are kings of being those delay factors, Jetcon and IMAT, they're over on this small tower side over in kitchen and dining, just putting a lot of pressure on any little bit of intel Kettering are trying to acquire. So far, no gunfights have taken place, but it's still all about understanding what is happening throughout this round, and it takes time to do so. Time has now been used, and now it's Papa Peen's hour to strike once again. Just full sending it in through Master, converting that over to Trophy, and it's going to be a duel to the death. He's going to participate in some of that utility clear, removing that shield, and Arv has now been fully alerted that there is a monster on the other side of the wall. Attacker the Wub Wub goes off, but Arv unable to even pull the trigger of his Mossberg shotgun, and now the close quarters combat that Akron was going to rely on has now been lost, and it's going to be that Boa Constrictor strategy for Kettering as they start to establish more of the control around the bomb sites. Big missed opportunity there. Papa P was there alone. He had no more utility to deny the Banshee other than walking up to it and punching it. Of course, Arv didn't know that, so his swing was just mistimed. He could have waited a lot longer to actually go for that swing, in which case the shotgun would have been considerably more effective. But despite that little setback, Nice little jump out and aggressive play from that small tower side is going to result in the death of a derp as well. So it'll be kept even, a 4v4 still for these teams, but still two roamers that have not been dealt with. Jetcon and IMAT still hanging out below. Of course, they don't want to leave their anchors too isolated and too alone because Kettering could, of course, capitalize on that. But in the same token, they could get some pretty similar and, well, very powerful flanks if Kettering aren't quite careful. A nice little one-tap from Papa P means that the life of Surma is no more. IMAT finally swings into action, but it's not going to solve Hennessy from a dangerous engagement. No, he manages to win it out. Tommy Boy will solve Akron on the back foot a little bit here because Hennessy is so low HP, and Kettering now could potentially take control of dorms. 
Jetcon has to work his way up those white stairs. The barbed wire that his teammates set up, it's going to work against him because defenders can still make noise. And if Kettering hears that, they can swing on that position. Now, Akron still has bulletproof cameras and collecting it with the Nitro cells. Perfect. A swing on in for Baka. It was all hopeless at that point. It was just a Hail Mary play, and unfortunately, it did not work out well. Akron. That's now two in the row. It was chaos and looking blink for them, but they were still able to bring it back. Well, I was, I mean, sounded a little bit confused there because, well, I was, to be honest. It was an interesting, it was an interesting approach from Kettering. We, we saw how they wanted to apply your pretty typical pressure from that trophy side, getting open that closet wall, getting a little bit of pressure from big window as well to make sure they have you know, for the most part, that worked. Until the point where they started to get aggressive, even though they found a couple of opening picks, we saw Papa P, who was just in the middle of the site. He lined up the head of Surma. That was a really big pick onto your maestro. But then he got a bit over eager, and he found himself alone in Kids. Completely alone. Didn't have support from Attic. He did have support from Kid's window, but there's a lot of angles in that room where you're just not going to be able to cover from that window. That 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 meant that Papa P was alone in a 1v1 with Hennessy. And even though it was a messy engagement that looked like Hennessy would get caught out, he managed to prevail. And that single kill managed to send Kettering into some sort of spiral where they just couldn't recover the momentum that was falling away. It was a 2v2. I mean, it was still even advantage, and Hennessy was low HP. One player was cut off from the objective, but rather than sending... ...the open, by the way. Nobody in there. No C4 there. No defender with an angle there. It was a lot of pressure applied in kids instead. And you had that swing in from the kid's window, which didn't work, and Hennessy was there to shut it down. And you had a C4 from below. So a couple of things there that were looking good initially didn't shape up to be all that effective. And well, that's going to give Akron two rounds in a row. Move on to round number three. Akron looking to, of course, complete that rotation as they head to kitchen and dining. And it's always a hot button topic. What is the best of these sister bomb sites? Do you go to meeting room or do you go to dining room? And it really depends on what region you're in that dictates which bomb site you go to. Europe loves their dining room. And well, the United States and North America, they <laughs> love that uh, meeting. And speaking of loving, I, Matt, and Bucca have had quite a turnaround throughout this series. But it's actually, I believe, that was Ash that got that change up for IMAT bringing out that FO12 but sadly it didn't work out well his too much aggressive play cost him out big it's not gonna cost Hennessy at least he'll swing around cutting down derp who found himself all the way up in the pit of attic that corner all the way pushed through as we call it but Hennessy is still here he hasn't made the smart decision to fall away and now is in a very dangerous position Bucca confirms that Hennessy should not have been overstaying his welcome and will confirm the kill along the way. So Kettering now find the advantage after an early good pick onto IMAT, who of course experienced a little bit of a buggy hatch there. And well, they're gonna continue to use that advantage the whole way through. There goes Anomaly, he'll pick up another kill, forcing Surma and Arv, who only have one kill between the two of them, to lock down this objective against four attackers who now have complete control of this top floor. That control is going to start to mount with that vertical play. Flashbangs are going to do the exact same storyline. Bucca sprinting on through with no drone coverage will lose his life to Surma on that Alna, but that will confirm to Kettering that everybody is somewhere towards the west side. You can start to go for a plan, but aggressive Jack and Fox strategy is not going to help Papa P at all, but we will now find ourselves in the post plan. Diffuser plans in, and it's a dangerous position to Arvin. He knows that he's in a crossfire. He has that information from that yellow ping. He's going to tank that gunfight, almost grabbing that head. Tommy Boy will lose a little bit of that HP, but still not quite enough to be fully lethal. R is going to elect for the aggressive gunfight, actually on that bomb site, able to win it. Now it's a doomsday hour, but unfortunately, Tommy's still holding that angle, is able to take that duel. Kettering taking the quaternary bomb site in round three.
Well, that's well played from them, wasting no time in taking that vertical control, using that to find kills and to take control of the objective as well. Of course, Akron certainly not happy about that one. I am at on his screen. It wasn't. He thought it was open, so he tried to drop in. He got caught out, and what would have been ordinarily a pretty safe drop out and rotating away, not getting over aggressive, playing it smart, turned out to be I'm at in his grave. Hennessy feeling the pressure to answer that back got aggressive, and while he was able to find one kill, he refused to fall away immediately following that, and well, he died as well, and at that point, you Defenders lost vertical control well, way too quickly. Kettering had enough time to get intel, get picks, and great job from them overall. When they moved ahead towards that execute phase, I really thought Arv had a shot there in terms of denying them in the post plant. He was able to find one, but not the second, but something that came to mind is that that's a Probably, what, the third or fourth time we've seen the Echo in play. And I don't know about you, Chief, but I don't know if one time we have heard that sweet, sweet sound of the Yokai drone sending out its sonic pulse and denying a plant. See, that's the kind of the problem with Echo. You're relying on Echo to be alive in the dying seconds of the round. Fundamentally, that's not a problem. The thing is, usually Echo is in a clutch scenario or in a scenario where he has to be gun up. So you rely on your teammates to use those Echo drones as a Valkyrie camera that's stuck to the ceiling. Again, fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're bringing the Echo to have that drunken blast, it's not really accomplishing its job. If you're bringing the Echo drone as a Valkyrie camera, Camera, I'll accept that and we can move on with that point. But again, it's just the opportunity cost of utility. It is what you're trying to accomplish with that utility. And it also, it's going to be the same storyline as we see Kettering in a position to go for the rush. When you have an extended roam upstairs, one of the byproducts the attackers can do is just sending it into the bomb site. I mean, sometimes it just comes down to that. You know, it just comes down to just pushing in and just use overwhelm the, def the the defense. And sometimes, sometimes it works. More often than not though, you need to have a bit more of a cohesive plan than that. We are gonna see Kettering now working a pretty similar approach as to last time, but a marked difference is the fact that they are the ones to find the opening pick. This one is on to I, Matt. He'll not be allowed to roam or hang around the closing seconds of the round. And, well, Derp is going to shut down Hennessy as well. So that's two early picks for Kettering. Surma finds one. Now a second. Great shot there in response. That immediately neutralizes this one and gives Jetcon something to work off of. Unfortunately, a flashbang is going to full blind the Maestro. It's not going to prevent Surma from finding another kill of his own. That one onto the frag legend of Papa P, who has been popping off in this matchup constantly. It's going to leave Anomaly and Tommy Boy all alone. They're both pressuring from this laundry side, and Akron, they know this bomb. full well. They're going to be looking to shut this one down. You've got Surma playing close behind the bomb chassis. Jetcon, they have this perfect crossfire. And the, the guns will, though. Tommy Boy lines up one head. Now the second, as Arv was able to find up one kill, and he'll get the next one. Great shot there from Arv. Akron recover round four. Surma was the saving grace for Akron. Close quarters and tucked or between the bomb site and the wall. Again, good positioning for him, able to take those duels. By Kettering, they really should have been able to capitalize on them. With those flashbangs going out, with all the utility they had at their disposal, how weren't they able to win that engagement? And somebody who went full Milky Way. And the same storyline also went in favor of the Aldo wielder. He also went full white. But Kettering wasn't pushing off their flashbang utility. And the same storyline gets worse when you look at that overall drone economy. They went for a swift execute. They identified the offsite pressure was going to be a little bit too oppressive. That was a good read. They went for a swift execute. Also good read. But sometimes you need to slow things down just a little bit theme park you need to take a deep breath and then go for that execute because again if you have more than a hundred seconds left on that clock that is one of the best assets to have in a game and make sure you cash in on that well i mean for akron the asset they've been using well has been you know their last possible anchor i mean our 
has been just so clutch tonight. And that last round, I mean, was no exception. Just finding that long angle with the UMP, finding those last two kills when it looked, well, it initially looked good, but then all of a sudden so dire for Akron as Kettering were able to uh, really make that laundry push work, which isn't something as casters we say often. Those freezer and laundry takes are just so hard to do well, especially for collegiate teams who, you know, sometimes in a situation like that, it just comes down to gun skill and a good situation and a never a good environment to let your gun skills shine. Didn't stop Kettering though. Didn't stop Tommy Boy for getting probably the greatest shot we've seen so far tonight. But I'm at is quick to uh, squash the momentum in hopes that Kettering were trying to build on this Oregon attack. He will go for a ruthless spawn peak and that is going to mean the end of Derp. It's really been an unfortunate night for Derp. He's not had as typical of a performance that we see from him normally he's up there you know playing that flex support role tonight playing sometimes these fragging roles you expect derp to find these greater numbers and it shit is just not the case so far right now and our i mean he's hungry for numbers this isn't a fragger but he's going for the frags he swings out on papa p in the very same engagement we saw unfold in round number one now goes in favor of akron tommy boy finds a kill of his own but he can't do much to prevent every single one of his teammates from falling by the wayside, except for his hard breaching friend in. You did lose IMAT in the process on Akron, but these frags were massive, and now you're up in a 4v2. Yeah, Arv was forced to make that swing simply because his ADSs were burned away. He was too vulnerable to a potential frag grenade. While well, not unavailable for Kettering, but still, you have to have that in the back of your mind as a defender is sitting in that position. There could be a frag grenade coming in my range, and it's just too risky to just sit in a corner the entire time. Now, he was able to get that shotgun off. A little bit of damage dealt out to Anomaly, but Anomaly able to open up the wall. Impact grenades going out, fully missing. Now Anomaly has control of that South Games wall. That can be an additional insertion point for Kettering. That flashbang dump says it will be that 90 degree crossfire flood in and trying to take as many of these duels against their four remaining members of Akron. You don't often see the ADSs actually reset in their cooldown and burn more flash grenades, but we already highlighted the first situation where the attackers were forced to burn it, and there's the second. Hennessy's going to look away at the chance to get a kill onto Surma. A C4 isn't going to do much, but the bullets of Jetcon, they'll do the work, cutting down both of the last remaining Kettering attackers and finishing out the round for Akron. They move ahead and take that 4-1 to lead. Kettering put a lot of emphasis on one side of the map. That was a master trophy sign. We've seen a lot of teams go for these linear executes, but I still want to have attacking rosters mix up and diversify their portfolio. Open up North Attic. You know I'm at his roaming there. You can try to drone him out and catch him when he's coming back to his bomb site, or if at minimum your heart is stuck on that trophy execute, just open up that big window. You don't have to go through that position, but just opening up that window will change up how the defenders are going to be rotating Attackers through that bomb sign. Because when that window's hand. open, essentially there's a large no man's land that is created between the two bomb sites and a defender if they want challenge big window and if you couple that with somebody sitting over in trophy now the defender has to look at two directions simultaneously and unfortunately humans only have eyes in the front of their head not in the back of their head as well crazy how that works sometimes we wish that we did you know often even though you know teachers and mothers always lie to us and say that they do <laughs> used to believe them you know you used to be like oh oh, oh well you you got you got x-ray vision Five you can seconds. see behind your half sure i mean i got you and uh you know we may not literally have that nor may these players in the lobby but at the very least we, we can see through walls you know we've got these beautiful blue outlines and we can see exactly how akron are looking to set this one up you know you're heading back to your tertiary bomb site you're looking to win this one out and i don't know kettering they need to get this one going quick yet again last time and the reason they found success on this very same objective is because their top down clear was just these players who were trying to get aggressive and and they punished them 
for overstaying their welcome. This time we've got a little bit of a change. We actually have Surma playing on the top of White Stairs. I think, at least I think that's Surma who will finally rotate away though. He was initially applying that support to that top floor player, Hennessy, in kids right now. And he honestly may be headed back in that direction. But right now it's all about Hennessy. That's where our focus is going to remain because Kettering, they are going for this top down clear and their objective is to force out Hennessy. Hennessy's objective is to not die. He doesn't need to find a kill. Something that he didn't understand last time around. He can just drop away. That's time wasted. That's your job well done. Keep that 416 in hand and fight on the objective itself. Now you're talking about Surma. Well, throughout that, he was able to pick up one of those Meister cameras and move it over to one of the places we're going to see Kettering end up pushing from. Those are going to be those white stairs. So now Akron will have full range of information. And that's also going to allow some more support. Up, he's going to find himself in the opportunity. Do I retreat away or do I bury myself in a corner? He's going to go for the latter of these options. Now confirm his grave at some point will be upstairs in kids' dorms. He's going to start to collect some kills. Two in his favor. Forced to reload that 416 carbine. And there's still more members of Kettering ready to say hello. It's on for a quad kill. That's three. Now forced to go for the pistol. So close to being able to achieve that I'm at from behind, though. It's looking bad for Kettering. All on the primary hard support. Who's going to crumble in the hands of Man. It's a tandem roam upstairs for the zips, and that's going to be a dominant half for Akron. Oh no, man, that was. <laughs> I'll, I think the industry calls it a yikes. I will admit defeat on that one, yes, and and I think no better time than any to pull out the yikes call. That one was the one that that really that really got me, Kettering. Probably their worst performance in any round so A couple of classic mistakes. You know, they just did not do enough to kill Hennessy. I mean, the player that I said didn't have to get kills to be, like, be effective, he, he, he got three kills. I mean, how do you let that happen? He was all on his own. It was a 1v5. Attackers need to locate and that, defuse That's bomb. not exaggerating. There were five. All five attackers were right there, and there was only one man to deal with. It's the clutch master, clutch legend himself. It's Hennessy. I get it. He's hard to kill. But is he that hard to kill? <laughs> I don't know. I really he's, don't know. <laughs> he's clearly drinking the syrup today. I mean, whatever he, his warm-up routine is or whatnot is just good. And he's just yeah. winning a gunfight. Said he has no business winning. I think that's the most important thing to highlight. There's just, in a million years, you present that scenario. Yeah, you run, you know, the stats on that over and over again. The likelihood of successfully repeating that is like 0.1%. It's just fortunate to see you know mistakes like that be made particularly in a semi-final like this where there is no margin for error you're on map three after all you're able to beat the 11 time champions on one of the maps but you're gonna have to be able to replicate that one more time and when you're sitting at five and one on that final map those mistakes that margin of error those mulligans become pretty much impossible to have good thing is they don't have to attack anymore that's one saving grace for Kettering they're now on defense of course we are now at the side switch in round number seven so our focus somewhat shifts to Akron's attack and what they can concoct but with Kettering being on the back foot and with this underdog story still unfolding in front of us I mean I'm really interested to see how Kettering can make something happen here I, I definitely expect them to get a couple of rounds it's Oregon defense this is where rounds often come not easily but they on the attacking side they're still going to need to capitalize on every opportunity that they get we can see this early roam coming out from bucca he's retreated a little bit he's playing back in z but he is definitely aware of this meeting hall pressure he'll take a couple of shots but they will not connect in fact not a single bullet landing onto surma who pushed on in dropped down from stage and dropped bucca to his early grave the full flash dump in through pillar is going to allow imat to find a kill of his own now he's on the ying in fact he's all pushed up through elbow and he's going to almost get another kill papa p walking right back into it and looking the wrong way the information game from kettering that was so strong on theme park is clearly not 
happening right now on this basement site. There goes Tommy Boy. Jetcon says that. And now it is up to Anomaly in a 1v5. He's got one more Toxic Babe. He's got an SMG-11. And, well, he's got to make a miracle happen. Flash Jump coming on. Well, you have one player holding on this long angle. No Akron. They're, they're taking their time. They're gaining this intel. They've got, you know, five drones to work with and five operators to hold as many angles as you want. Anomaly, he'll take one swing unsuccessfully. Looks behind him and Arv is there. A headshot delivered and a flawless round is what Akron put down. What a strong showing, and that's part of the problem when you're just doing a pure anchor down basement defense. The attackers can just fully set up on you, and once they go for their setup, it's just a pile driver just removing every obstacle in their way. And it was a fitting storyline, to say the least. We even saw a Warden going against that Ying. Now, actually, Warden call, has call. been shown multiple times throughout this series, and yet there has been no ying there hasn't even been smoke grenades that was imat bringing out that warden back on theme park but warden actually had some uses unfortunately that's just that power of that pile driver just removing and putting all that metal down into that floor and bearing kettering with it well we can see the paws coming out from uh kettering here they are I mean, just like Akron in the previous map, looking to regroup, looking to refocus, and I don't know. It's a little bit late. It is six to one. Akron are sitting on match point, and Kettering are now at a five, a five round deficit. That's going to be tough to pull back. We are going to go for that full rehost because Kettering looking to take that time to regroup and pause here. But, Chief, I don't know. I don't know, what is that one thing they need to do to bring this one back? Or, or, or is there more than one thing? Are there just too many things for them to overcome here? Or is there one thing that sticks out that's like, this is what Kettering have to address? They need to be dynamic again. If we go back to Theme Park, why they're able to win? Well, look at the area of all over the place. They are tucked in corners. They are sniping away drones. They're rotating back up stairwells. But the one defense that we've seen from them was far from dynamic. They just put themselves in chairs downstairs in the basement. They cracked up in a cold one and started to watch TV. That isn't a good way of defending a bomb site. You need to be that hooligan strategy. Look at what IMAT was just doing to you on your attacking stint. He was sitting in a corner waiting for a member of Kettering to walk on by and shooting them in the back, exploiting the bad drone economy. There was a member of Kettering somewhere over on that top floor, either by trophy or in dorms. Why was he recalled so early? Was it because that Swift execute or was it some other reason? They had some active play, but they never really leveraged it. We'll have to see what they can do when we come back from this rehost. We'll take a quick break while we get all that done. So stick with us. We'll be right back.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Early the semifinals, and we're in a best of three series going the entire distance. Right now, it is Akron Zips in control of map three. They're currently in match point. Kettering has been struggling so far in Oregon, and it's going to be up to them to take us into overtime, take us into the victory of overtime if they want to move on to that grand final. We're almost moments away from starting the series and continuing it forward. Well, we have gone the distance in the series, but it doesn't look like we're going the distance on Oregon just yet. We're sitting on round number eight, where Akron have now taken firm control of this map. Six to one right now for them. It is match point. Kettering, they've taken this break to regroup to try to figure out what in the world they need to do to now win five rounds in a row. Before the break, we talked a little bit about it, but we also, you know, wondered, is it possible? And well, this... And we can already see a couple of big changes. Not only pulling out the Aruni, which is one of those operators that was more recently introduced into the meta, but we are going to bring out the Tachanka as well. Derp. Pulling out the Shumika launcher. Pulling out that massive LMG now. I wonder how this is gonna go. And it's a curious decision because you went over, we went for a Chachanka over a smoke. I mean, if we look at the utility value at itself, I would take the 30 seconds of time denial from those smoke toxic beams over the Shamika launcher any day. Now the Shamika launcher can deny more time. The problem is those flaming balls only work in such a small square meter it's like one or two square meters and it just really doesn't apply the coverage that one desires so as a result it forces you to use more of those flaming balls and then you Kettering, they're bringing out something that's different and when you're on match point serious point you have to do exactly that bring out something that the attacking lineup, the Akron Zips, will not be prepared for. Well, nobody's ever prepared for a Tachanka, especially one that maybe a spawn peak? Maybe? 
No. Okay, he's just gonna be dancing around, a dancing Tachanka. That's what nobody is ready for. And, well, Derp is gonna be now looking to get aggressive. He'll pop open the window, and the player outside is actually not going to pre-fire that. One missed opportunity. Will he miss the second? Kinda. Derp just snook away before that could happen, but... Now I'm mad has his eyes trained on that window. Definitely a good distraction. So Derp is at least done something in this round if the Tachanka isn't able to do much else. But we can see that Akron, they're now going through their early steps. They're making their way through this map and they're going for this bottom up clear. That's not something on this particular objective. You do have to clear out this bottom floor. The one thing they haven't cleared out, of course, is Bucka, who's worked his way down all the way from Attic, and now he's frying Jetcon just in the nick of time. An air jab will send him across the room, but R was too busy droning out to capitalize on that. You've lost now your Zofia, one of your big fraggers in this game. Akron looking to build something back by going for an aggressive play. Arv should have been able to get communication. Hey, we've just had our site compromised from behind, but it's going to be the site compromise for Akron. They're going to start to flood in with those Ian Candelas, but it's all in favor of Kettering as they out frag and out train Akron. It's now Akron at the man disadvantage. The diffuser is surrendered over by that big window, and there's nothing wrong with big window executes. The problem is you have to have a little bit more map control. Whether or not it's somebody in the south window repel or even the dorms window, you need to have some type of cross coverage. And unfortunately, Akron didn't product of them sitting on match point series point with a large margin of error. But still, you have to treat every single round like it could be your championship hopes. Well, the hopes of Akron in this round are now hinging on a two-pronged approach. Surma at the big window, Arv creeping around towards the main stairs. His position communicated, though. The uh, evil eye from Papa P staring him right in the face. So now Tommy Boy is worrying about both of these angles. But Tommy Boy's position is also known. Surma not able to find that angle before perishing. And now it's Arv who will push all the way through, but he's walked into a deathly crossfire. He'll be able to find one kill before eventually being felled by the MP7. So Kettering, turns out the timeout paid off. I'm not going to say that Tachanka did. He died before a single Shumika could have been used or a kill could have been found by him. But nonetheless, Kettering take the round and they stave off defeat for one more round at least. And that was with their food, just rushing the bomb site all out right. And that's not going to be an option for them. Again, they're a roster that loves to have their swift executes, where they execute on the bomb site as fast as possible, trying to achieve map control as fast as possible. But Akron never had map control. All they did was sit outside that big window and just fly on through. Now, we have seen Ying be a staple back in round seven, which is a basement defense. And it seems Defense. like Akron just wants to have the extra Akron. fire support and just obliterate anybody who happens to look at one of those Candela charges. Now, there will be a slight wrinkle in that strategy when Akron goes with that style of play. It is going to be the Clash and her shield filled with tasers. If you walk anywhere close to that, well, she is going to slow you down. If you're a team that wants to go for a fast take, Clash is about the biggest bane you can have. And this is what Kettering are trying to bring out. They're trying to bring but also these high risk elements. A Tachanka is a high risk. A clash is high risk. And if Akron circumvent this, like circumvent Bucket entirely and don't go for this blue take, she may be completely useless. Good thing is though for Kettering, it seems that Akron at least spawned on this side, but it seems that they have some suspicion and their sixth sense is telling them you know what, let's let's do something else. We don't want to walk straight on into that bulletproof shield and that information. And honestly, even at times, frag heavy queen of the clash. Like a mirror window, you can play right behind the clash and go for those kills. Something we often see happen over in blue bunker and something that we're not going to see able to happen right now because Bucka being full flash, he's forced to fall off this angle while IMAT continues to apply this pressure. That is one Candela now wasted so that's something positive the clash has already done but bucka needs to be careful because the attacking 
side, and you've got a Zofia, who with one of those impact, one of those stuns, can send that shield flying and can send Buck into the grave. Good job for Kettering to recall Buck up back to the bomb site. As soon as E-Box hatch opened up, he's no longer he's safe playing on those no stairs because he can be shot in from behind. With that wall being soft, and even if it was reinforced, the top of it I can have bullets whiz on through. Anomaly was playing that cross cover, but too close to the eruption of that Goyo shield, he's now going to lose his life. Another prong of that time now strategy for Kettering has been completely lost. 30 seconds of Toxic Babe, unable to be used. Here comes that push here. Hennessy and Jetcon now together up in pillar. Staring Bucket in the face though. So this brick wall operator still in full effect. Information, annoyance. I mean, you, you've got it all when you bring out the clash. The one thing Kettering doesn't have, of course, is the man count. Akron have it up. And if they just play this trade game here on out, they Buck is going to make that challenging, but he's going to walk himself straight into a crossfire, nearly getting killed by that, but he will be able to call out, but the plant is going down. No C4, no impact or smoke or any of that kind to deny the plant. Instead, Bucket is going to stare at it until he gets shot in the foot. Arv collecting that kill. It is Tommy Boy with Kettering's hopes on the line in a 1v4 post plant. He'll work his way around the long haul. Nothing can be found there, pre-firing back and forth hoping that Akron get aggressive and throw away their lives for the 11 time collegiate champions are a little bit too good for that they're gonna sit back playing this one passive and they will secure this victory Jetcon will get the kill but time was pretty much expired at that point Akron finish it out here round number nine on Oregon it took us three maps but the message and the intended and expected result is still the same Akron they'll move on to your premier invite grand finals I will have to say, we're highlighting the underdog story of Kettering. It was taking that 11-time collegiate champion to map three and really having a strong map two of theme park. I mean, I don't think any of the analysts were really expecting that. A lot of people were writing off Kettering as this is going to be a swift 2-0 and it was far from the case. Some of these maps were one-sided, but I have to say, if we're looking at Kettering moving forward in different collegiate games, they're definitely a powerhouse that you have to respect the name of. I mean, you do. Kettering have have proved that, you know, so far. And I mean, and their just random success in these last few weeks has been has been really great to see. Of course, remind you of their path. They came into these playoffs rather unexpectedly because UGA was, of course, eliminated. They took down CU Boulder, just stomping them. And then, of course, a very close mass against GCU, which nobody expected to go in Kettering's favor. They really just put on a show season and 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 for the summer as as we get closer to that season i'm i mean i'm i'm really excited to see how they play here i don't know if the full roster is staying together i i sure hope so because they looked good tonight of course not good enough to take down akron that is a whole nother level of collegiate siege standard beating one of the best teams or if not the best team collegiate siege has ever seen so like i said they will move on to the grand finals they will be playing either purdue or oklahoma state that other invite semifinal is happening tomorrow and we'll know the result of that once that's completed and we'll know our grand final pretty soon and honestly all those teams that you just lifted are listed are staples of collegiate but jonah i think that's gonna do it for you today as we wrap up this season or this series but if you like Collegiate Siege, well, there's still one more series of the night, so keep our tab open. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with you in five minutes.
Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light shine through? sky gazing far into the night i raise my hand to the fire but it's no use because you can't stop it from shining through it's true baby let the light 